Hi everyone, the following video is a recording of our 17th Artist Feedback AMA session that was held within the Meta Jungle Discord on July 14th and featured all different NFT photography genres. This session was hosted by Mike Schmidt and Dan Hawk, and we want to thank them for their time in reviewing 12 different NFT photography collections and editions, as well as everyone that was able to attend and every all the artists that submitted their work for review. This session is full of really incredible information about the creation and curation of your NFT photography collections and editions, as well as discussion on some topics in the NFT market today. We hope you find this useful, and with that, let's go on ahead and get into it. But uh, it's good to see um, a lot of the artists joining the uh, AMA panel. So, see a lot of people in here from Weird Faces that are actually in the AMA, and there's uh, a lot of really, uh, really good work uh, this week. I noticed a lot of the new applications that came out. Oh wow, wow, wow! Lots of really, uh, really interesting stuff to talk about. So. What's new with um? What's new with you, Dan? So you got got some new uh, new work uh, coming out anytime soon? Or, or yeah, anything? well, I yeah, I actually put out a a new edition this uh, over the weekend. Pre launch, pre did some pre sale, and then it's public now. So you can always go take a look at that. Uh, but not here to not here to show off my own stuff. But uh, it's there. If anybody wants to look. Awesome, dude. I actually saw the one that you have out. It's um, it's a uh, it's an astral shot, right? It is. Yeah, it's no. um, it's called uh, Lost Lake Galaxy, and it's basically um, the Milky Way over Lost Lake, which is a kind of a mountain resort area <clears throat> that's right near Mount Hood. Kind of our one of our you know sort of crown jewels of Oregon of the kind of the West Coast. Uh, you know these volcanic peaks um and it's it's a really fun shot it's a few, actually a few years old but it's it's one of the ones i'm proudest of and so i thought hey i'm gonna put this out as an addition and get addition and get it into as many people it, many collectors uh galleries as i can um i, I kind of like that idea i like the idea of sharing it with lots of people so I just yeah thought, I, just, I just started sharing my screen um let's take a look at it real quick i know we're not here to <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Just show each other's work, but I don't want to see. You can see my screen, right? Yeah. yeah. There it is. Cool. Yeah. Beautiful, and it holds up really well in high resolution. So, so good. I love the reflection on the lake, too. So, like, so to take a shot like this, you have to composite, too, or is this one? Well, I think a, a a good way to think about it in in the astro and you and I've talked about astro a little bit in in our AMAs, but there's there's kind of um, accepted terminology for how people do things, and basically this is it's not really a composite. What it what it is is it's a it's a stack and a blend, and so the way that I took this is that the the stars there are actually ten separate shots. That were all taken sequentially back to back and they're all 10 seconds long and then or i think they might be 20 seconds long on this one and then those are all blended in a app that's called starry landscape oh gosh something like a starry landscape stacker i think is what it's called and then and, and you just grab like those 10 images and then you just press like a button that says like stack and then it just puts it together and it makes it perfect yeah. like this or is this something yeah. you have to do yeah, really? the, yeah you, you do exactly that. And what's here's what's kind of interesting about it is that when you stack them, it blends the images and it, it what you're kind of doing is it eliminates the noise because you're getting getting rid of any kind of hot pixels or any kind of noise that are ha yeah. happening. So it, so it basically sums up the data and gets rid of the bad data, which is what happens when you crank the ISO. So um, you stack those 10 images and then the foreground is different. The foreground is actually a three minute exposure to get uh, at a much lower ISO. So it's really clean, there's not a lot of noise. And so uh, from the mountain down um, is all one three minute exposure and then the sky is 10 se separate exposures. But I think one of the really key things that's different is that a composite would generally be describing an image where you're putting together um, a foreground that doesn't go with the background. You're putting yeah. different elements 
together. This, these all, all 11 shots were shot sequentially, right back to back. Um, and so this is generally called a, a stack and blend. And then, um, and that's kind of how I like to do things. I don't really do composites where it's a sky that wasn't there or taking uh, like a foreground and saying, I'll shoot the foreground at blue hour. This wasn't shot at blue hour. This was shot at the same time as the, as the sky. Nice. Thanks for the education on that. Yeah, I said the wrong thing, actually. So composite, yeah, that's like when you, when you place things in an image that aren't there and people create collages and stuff like that. So I'm looking at the, the reflection, and there's all these different colors, right? There's like, there's like blues, reds, yellows, orange. Where, where, where is like this blue and this red? Like where is yeah. <laughs> so because it's the longer exposure, um, I don't know if you if you can kind of see it, but on the mountain there actually is just a little bit of a warm sort of a tint. That's it's it's not pure white. It's actually just a little. There's a little bit of orange in it, and that that reflection just picked up in the water, and the and it's those are actually the city lights of Portland and Hood River reflecting off the mountain. Well, and so are you, are you in pre-sale still right now? Oh, no, yeah. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Oh, no. so this, I haven't changed the uh, the pin tweet, but at this point, they're they're live, and anybody who wants can go pick one up. It's point zero six is the is the public price, and uh, one of the kind of fun details about this one is that I I pre sold ten of them, and of those ten people, I'm going to draw uh, a random name, and I'm actually going to gift and airdrop a an image from this same night that's different. So so it's one like of those lucky people is going to get a one of one. That's cool. I like that utility a lot because it draws anticipation for like people to want to like, you know, people want to like place bets. So, like I, I'm gonna buy one because I want to see if I can get this too or whatever. You know, they just really love the image. They want to try to get that other one too. It's like a, it adds a, like a you know a gamified or sort of like gambling aspect to it, which is really fun. Yeah, I find I part I participate more. So when they have that. <laughs> So cool. I think well, it's fun on a night like this. You shoot so many images that there's always like some extra behind the scenes or some extra stuff, you know? Yeah, I think 0 0.06 is really fair pricing for like all that went into this shot, you know? So, yeah, really cool. Thanks, man. I just wanted to ask what you've been up to and check that out. So, I'm going to try to get one here. Gas comes down and that be uh, cool. So, awesome, bro. Appreciate it, man. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I myself have just been shooting a lot <laughs> during this sort of like big, like downtime. I've been getting the ferry like religiously like going on it for like four hours and it's like a half hour ride. So I've been like riding it there, back, there, back, there, back, there, back. <laughs> it's like yeah, nice. really learning like the map of the boat and like it's crazy because like when you do something repetitive so many times, you just like find different areas where you see an angle that you like, and then maybe there's not a shot there. And then you come back in like a half hour and maybe something is happening there. So I'm like remembering like these different areas and different spots. So it's, it's really cool sort of thing. But, um, cool. With that, um, let's get into the, to the AMA. So like um, first artist that we have here is, uh, is Yulia. Right, and um, her project is Ticket to the World, and I actually just I actually just grabbed this one uh, yesterday. I don't know if it's having a lot of background noise, but um, is that yeah, that's there? that's me. That would be uh, that would be hair dryer in the background. Why don't I just oh, mute okay. myself? I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, that's fine for now. I, I'm sure that you know the hair dryer ends at some point, so that's cool. That's at least we know it's that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I actually just picked up this one um, just last night because I was looking at the uh, series for the AMA and I was like, a really beautiful, clean, uh, clean shot. And I haven't been to, um, I haven't been to Chicago. And this kind of reminds me in New York, we have a red cube <laughs> with a circle in it. And I wouldn't be surprised. I didn't do the research that it could be the same, uh, same artist that just has these big pieces in different cities. But Love this shot that there's like no real like 
you know, people walking through or anything like that. It just feels very much about um, geometry and architecture and you got the reflections in the building. And so like Yulia, what Yulia is doing is um, this Ticket to the World collection, which is really interesting. So it's the first time anything like this has been done um, where she has six, yeah, six different places, right? So it's Chicago, Istanbul, New York, Morocco, Egypt, uh, and Oman, which I don't even know where Oman is, but that's interesting. And so six different places where uh, she's she's gone, and uh, let's just read it. Uh, this limited edition capsule collection tells the stories of six iconic places around the world that have left a mark on my uh, travel photography path. Uh, as, a, as a travel journalist, I now travel the world on assignments telling stories, but my journey started on the streets of New York and in the sand dunes of Morocco and on the ferries of Istanbul. I'm always hearing about these ferries of Istanbul and I'm the ferry guy. I got to head out there. It's, so, it's like so many beautiful images coming from different people from those, uh, those ferries there. I feel like they're a huge part of the, um, the commute there. These, um, these are the st uh, their stories uh, brought to life through six capsules. Um, and so she calls them capsules. So each drop is of six and, um, and so there is going to be six drops of six equaling um, 36, um, 36 total images, um, but they're each an edition of six, which is really cool because that's a really limited edition. You, see, you, know, uh, you normally see small editions at like 10, but this is really small. These are at six. Um, so, yep, these are the stories uh, of the six capitals. I can't I read this part. Um, this collection of six capitals, capsules of six of six images was shot across six destinations so there's a lot of uh, a lot of sixes happening here in the span of six years um six images at a time will be released uh, with the next uh capsule of six re released upon sellout final collection will feature 36 images uh, and so yulia um yulia denesia is, I think that's how you say it, is an award-winning travel photographer working on assignments around the world. So that's awesome to always add, like, you have awards and stuff, add them at the end. It's perfect. Um, love her little uh, artist statement and everything like that. And I actually initially went to um to purchase this one, but um I couldn't. I was like, why do I have to make an offer? But I guess it sold out. <laughs> so uh, really cool shot here. Yeah. Um, so the ones that I were more drawn to in this first capsule from Chicago are actually, um, I guess, the more abstract and uh, and, and geometric shots. Um, Dan, if you have um, if you have the uh, blow dryer on, or if you want to speak with it on, yeah, uh, <laughs> <it's awesome. laughs> I also just had to mention to my, I was like, hey, put it down, <laughs> being loud in the kitchen. Um, yeah, this is. I actually had gotten a, not a sneak peek, but I kind of knew what was going on with you work here um, because I was uh, kind of watching from the sides as uh, our, our friend Hendro working on his latest drop. And so uh, Yuli and I were both kind of giving him uh, advice on how to put together the mechanics of everything. Um, and so I, I think... Here, kind of what I'm noticing, obviously, these are really beautiful photos. Uh, there's a lot of great things happening here. And it's it feels like, I, I appreciate the structure. It feels like it's a little tricky to kind of, like, I understand it after reading through all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's, I tend to lean away from when it gets complicated. <laughs> so that's my like, top level feedback. Great images it was a little hard for me to wrestle through like how this is all organized at the beginning until we read through it. Yeah. So sense. now I think, now I think it's just like, basically, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a collect, it's a collection of six places that she's been to, I guess to just like break it down for people in the easiest way. It's a right. collection of six, um, I guess is it cities or countries or it's a multi between cities and yeah, cities. Right. So, um, and country, Egypt's country. So yeah, so cities, countries, well, places that she's been to that's been really impactful for her, you know, for her travel, uh, her career as a, a travel photographer. 
And so she's she's dropped Chicago. Um, and I'm guessing that next. I don't know if she wrote it in the order. Maybe Istanbul's next if it comes in that order. But it's gonna be yeah. interesting to see that when all um, when all six uh, places are dropped, and there's 36 images, how they how they come together and are still cohesive since they're all different places. And right. I think they'll remain cohesive through her her style, which yeah. is, I mean, because I've seen a sneak peek of it. So that's that's where I saw the cohesiveness come in is through uh, Yulia's style. It's very it's very clean. Um, you know. It's got a very clean yeah. feel to it, very structured in the way that she shoots. So, yeah, well, I agree, and I think that's one of the things that's interesting is that it really is. There's really beautiful work here. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a fan, um, and I think I, what I would maybe what I'm kind of fishing, not, not hinting at a little bit, is I think that in order for it to continue, uh, this is going to be you know dropped over a period of time. So. It's just one of those things where I think it's going to be super important to continue to tell that story that, hey, here's the first six, and then here's the next six, and then here's the next six. And I would, I would guess, I'm not looking at, you know, the history here, but if I, if I did pull one up and look, like, there's a lot of these are sold already, and I'm noticing <clears throat> it would seem like these are being sold as... Uh, I, I don't know if they're being sold, sold as bundles or or how that's working, but I think it's it's good to notice that there's a lot of uh, collectors buying multiple. You know, they're buying a few photos from the collection, right? Yeah, there's Which, bundles. Yeah, there's definitely some bundles here. There's Alpha, um, yeah, Alpha, uh, Nifty Meta Girl, um, and Keystone Eighty. So I'm um, guess yeah. So these are zero point one. So these are. Uh, Looks like there's, I guess there's a discount, right? Because there's six, so three, six, nine, twelve, thirteen. Uh, it's pretty so good zero deal. Point, wow. So, yeah. So zero point zero three times six is a lot more than zero point. Right. <laughs> well, calculator, <clears throat> calculator. All right. Zero point zero three times six. Okay. So like zero point one eight. Would be what it would cost if you were to buy all six. So, like the people who bought the bundle, the super smart. Um, yeah. It, well, and I think this is something that you've kind of pioneered. You did the, you did something similar. Um, so, what Yulia is doing here is not that different from how you structured your fairy collection, where there's uh, you you do you did sell, uh, you know, bundles in advance and. And so I think, I think it's great. And I think the big thing that I'm still noticing is that when you're going to do this kind of thing, it's just important to tell the story. <clears throat> it, yeah. It, so it, I, people understand it. Yeah. So what I see is like probably a lot of work ahead of like, you know, either, either Yulia, if you're good at putting a video together or you have networked with someone in the space, that's good. Like, you know, like an upcoming video of Istanbul, you know, what that looks like and, you know, getting, like building anticipation, I guess, for each different city or country and really like telling that story over and over again of, of like what, what the collection is about to get people caught on about what the, what the capsules and, and, and what the whole thing is about. Right. And so like grabbing a piece too, and kind of just like posting that piece and telling the story behind it and, you know, um, yeah, speaking in space is just probably a good one for this collection too, and explaining yeah. that you're a travel mm -hmm. photographer, and you know, talking about what you've done as a travel photographer and like how you got to that point. Because like that's a dream for a lot of people to be able to yeah. go, go on assignment, right, and travel. Like that's always been in the back of my head as a dream. Like, oh, I wish I could travel the world and you know, make money and and get my pictures. It's really cool. I know Yulia is um, here, so. If you unmute, if you want yeah, to talk a little bit about it. What's up, Julia? Hey, friends. Hi, Mike. Hi, Dan. Hi, everyone. Um, Hello. Hi. I'm so glad to hear you. And Mike, you, your voice sounds so chill today. I love it. <laughs> honestly, honestly, it's because like uh, I was up 
I, I mean, yesterday I like shot the ferry for like a long time, but then I came home, I got home at like 10 o'clock, and my girlfriend wanted to hang out and watch like TV, but I wanted to edit photos. I usually go like straight into editing photos like, immediately. I edited for like two hours, then I watched the mov and movies that went through really late. So I'm just chill today. I'm I didn't sleep that much, so I got this kind of like <clears throat> relaxed demeanor. So, <laughs> but I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I hope you can catch up on sleep though. Don't don't. I will later. Sleep. Yeah, sleep is important. Um, so how are you doing? You yeah. Thank you guys so much. Yeah, I really appreciate your feedback. And then you you picked up on this actually. Mike was a huge inspiration for me in this project because I, you know, when I came uh, came back to the NFT space after some time away because I was on assignment, um, I I saw that everybody was doing additions, you know. So I wanted, I was I wanted to participate in additions, but I wanted to sort of. I, I didn't want to just put out one photo. Honestly, I wanted to, to for it to be a long term project. And that's where I was looking at what, you know, what is happening in this space. And I saw Mike's work and it was just such a huge inspiration for me. Thank you. Uh, I, think, I think it's great because it makes a lot of sense and it, it allows you when you have a really thick body of work, when you've got lots of stuff that you're, that you've been doing it, it in, a, in many ways showcases the multiple photos in a way that they wouldn't, if they were one of ones. And I kind of, I, I like, I really like that. Um, and I feel like that's one of the things that, that collections have done for us is it has allowed us to show a broader range of work than mm -hmm. we would have had we just sh showed just the, just the individual pieces. It's cool exactly. to have like, it's cool to have like a bunch of people be able to own one piece too and then like trade that piece as like a trading card sort of like and not just have like one of one and and the price is really attractive at 0 0.03 because you're because it's only six, you know, so it's uh it's really a it's really attractive price point too. So um, I I guess people really love this one because no one's posting it on secondary because that's where I was looking looking for it. So that's a good that's a good sign that you have some. That's the thing I'm noticing about with my collection too is that like um there's collectors that are just going to buy when you drop publicly and just flip it like they might just flip it to make 0 0.01 <laughs> like some people some people will flip the work like it seems like did they even make anything to even cover the gas and then so i i'm like try like pre-sale means a lot to me like now at this point that i'm like finding the, the right people that I know appreciate my work that if they are flipping it, that they're flipping that at, you know, at a, at a price that, you know, they, they think my work is, is worth rather than just trying to make this like quick book kind of a, a flip thing too. So I think pre-sales like, um, it's a lot of work though, right? Like you gotta, you gotta do a lot of messaging with people and, um, you know, find the right people that you want to own your work and stuff. But, it's uh, it's worth it. What what is what has it been for you like um Woody, with presale and speaking to collect collectors during presale? Because a lot of people are um a lot of people are like worried about that, right? Like a lot of people they don't want to message collectors and they don't know how to, and sometimes I don't know how to either. I'm right there, Mike. In fact, as you were speaking, I was I was like I need to speak to Mike more on how he does that because I can't like. I don't have the relationships I feel with collectors that I can just message them and say, Hey, you know, I have this going on. Do you want to check it out? Like, I, I don't know. And, and it may be cultural. So we actually spoke about this in some space, but for me, it's just such a barrier to, to, to DM somebody like that, you know? So I think that's why this has been a slow moving absolute for me because yes i'm showing up in spaces for sure although i i've even burnt out from that because you know after a while if you show up in spaces and you talk about the same collection again and again it feels like you're starting to feel a little bit like a broken record um so that part finding the the right people who will want to connect with your work yeah that's been a challenge for sure um i think and, um and go ahead go ahead i'm sorry Oh, no, no, I was just going to say, like, I was lucky that I had three bundles in pre-sale, right, that people picked it up because that automatically half of the capsule is, is sold. 
to to get the rest of them has been a challenge i'll admit it hasn't been easy um and that like that and, and you're not the first one like i've heard other people might say you know message collectors and say you know hey check out my work or whatever like it's it's been a big struggle for me to be able to do that i haven't i haven't done that well i think i think it has to do with um it has to do with like obviously it has to do with like the intention and like the story of the message right so for me what i did was like i i, I kind of just like before i sent anything i kind of like went into my notes and i was like you know so I think to myself, like, what does my collection really mean to me? And how long have I been working on it? And stuff like that. And so I, my message to collectors was like, this is my legacy project. I've been working on it for 10 years. It started by, you know, I was traveling to school and, you know, I, we, needed to, we needed to work on something uh, on a project. You know, we, we needed to work on a project for like a, or critique classes and I had no time between um, homework and all that stuff but on my commute I started photographing the people and it uh, through school and my my educators I found out that the work was sort of about solitude and then figured out like how that related to me and why I was seeking out to find those people because I was like lost in that space myself right and so what I like I, I sort of, I sort of, it, almost like an artist statement in a sense is how I, I wrote to collectors, and and I did do a, a copy and paste sort of thing because like I can't message a you know thirty different people with a, a perfectly specific message for them, but it was more like a you know this is this is my project that's coming out and it's it's uh, it's very important to me. I've been working on it for this long. This is what it's about. I left the Dropbox link of of 20 or four actually 40 images on the Dropbox link of 40 images and to see that it's cohesive and then I just went on to talk about you know they're going to be it's something that hasn't really been done before it's editions of of 10 at 0 0.03 but if collectors wanted to own all all 20 images of the first drop then you know then they can get a discount and a one gas transaction through a bundle and so if this type of work interests me, you know, let you know, let, let me know, um, you know, I, I value you in the space as a collector or something like that. That's kind of how I went about, about doing that. And that, Mike, that, that really worked for me. Mike, you know, I, I think I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm okay with telling the story of the project. That part is, you know, absolutely clear to me. I think for me, the struggle is the, that first message, right? So a collector who follows me, right? But we never actually interacted. And all of a sudden I'm messaging them, hey, I want to tell you about my project. That's the part where I'm sort of hung up on. That's harder, yes. So the, <laughs> the people that I sent it to were prior collectors of other work of mine, whether it was additions or um, other bodies of work that I had. So like, luckily I had put out an edition that got me like 90 something new collectors from that. And so I would start, I started by saying, Hey, you know, you're a previous collector of one of my pieces. And then I would go on like that. So yeah, I understand. So the new people, the new, the new collectors that I, that I, that I hadn't spoken with before. Yeah. I would say that it's probably a problem with me too. And I would probably, um, I would probably approach that by kind of just following what these collectors post about and what they do and introducing yourself by talking about like how, how they operate as a collector in the community and saying like, this is what you, this is what, um, you know, stands out about them, you know, that they, they talk about the story of people's work and that you just want to introduce yourself and, you know, this is my work. If you'd like to check it out or something, that's probably how I would go about that. I like that. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, if honestly, of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. But I was ambitious with this. And by the way, sorry for everyone else that we're spending so much time on this. Um, but hopefully, it's helpful to others as well. But like, I was ambitious in this project, but I didn't have a big collector base. You know, so I think for 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 a project of this size, you really want to have a collector base that you can have these conversations with ahead of time, right? And I did. I only had two collectors at that point, and both of them got the bundle. But you know, um, 
probably if I had to do it again, I would probably just come out with one edition to, to grow that collector base and then have this bigger project. But, you know, we'll get there somehow. Well, I think yeah. it's a good size, though. I think, it's, I think it is a good size. And you started with the smaller, you know, these six. And the great thing is that then next time around, you now, you now know how it works from a, just a functional standpoint. And, and you've been having these conversations. And now you have a broader range of people who've seen your work and already own it. So that's good. Absolutely. And it's okay that we spent some time talking about this because it's not like we're talking about this specifically for you. You know, this is something that like a lot of people need to know how to, how to do, you know, like to, to, to DM and approach a collector or, or, you know, you know, a lot of times, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to do it at all, but in some instances where you're coming out with a, people are coming out with ambitious projects that have you know lots of additions or lots of pieces and um i think getting some of that stuff sold before it drops is really important um because it builds uh, it builds some anticipation it builds um it builds some fomo for outside collectors and stuff like that and without that anticipation it's hard to move things even if they're the most beautiful images there in the world so it's yeah. important yeah, but really beautiful banner you have up here. I love the banner. I'm guessing that this is a different shot from uh, each different city slash country. That's right. And yeah, yeah. and it's it's really uh, and you got all the properties descriptions and uh, I think it's a I think it's a really great project. I'm looking forward to seeing it, um, how it how it pans out and how you sort of market um, the um, the future the future bundles as. You know, I mean, the future uh, capsules as as this one comes close to uh, to selling out. Agreed. I appreciate it. Thank you, then. You bet. <clears throat> with that, um, yep. Yeah, let's jump on to the next one. You cool with that, Dan? Yeah. Cool. All right. And so this one is um, this is human human in the street. Let's read down here. Um, and human in the street. This is by. Oh yeah, Ram. Uh, this is by uh, Ramazan. Um, uh, Sira Kog uh, Koglu. You got that that correct that last name there. And yeah. when I, I like first, it. yeah, right. When I first opened this up, I was like, I was like zero point zero six. Okay, another another edition collection. And then I realized that these are one of ones. 0.06 and like so like what's gas right now is that 44 well, that's high um well i'll tell you this i don't know if the artist is here but um when gas goes back down i want to buy this one <laughs> so uh and if someone else buys this instead that's cool because um i will then um buy this one <laughs> But I think for um, I think for uh, zero point zero six, that's really, really, a uh, really, really attractive price point for uh, uh, one of ones. And um, it's some some beautiful. Let's let's read your artist statement. Um, I photograph a human in crowds. How lonely he is. Uh, how he is in danger. At the same time, I would like to document that people integrate with the street and become part of the city. Most of the time, the human body doesn't make <clears throat> make any sense. However, the objects in the background give meaning to human behavior. And finally, the most important signature of man on the street is light. Without light, man cannot even be uh, cannot be even a shadow. Interesting. Um, and so, yeah. So six images here. So so nothing. There's nothing bought yet. And like when? Let's see. If I sort it by like oldest, um, when when was when were these created? So twenty one days, um, twenty one days sitting one of ones, a really attractive price. Um, we got uh, properties. Properties look pretty good here. Um, probably add licensing if that's something you want to add, especially if you have it in the description. Yep, you got the license in the description. I'm noticing that. The license in the description might as well add it to a few properties as well. And so, yeah, I think um, I think these are really beautiful. The one thing that turns me off a bit is, is the titles. Uh, human on ground, 
human in target, human in bright. Um, yeah, so, you know, I, I'd probably try to come up with, with something a little less direct than, like, human on and then where they are. Like, you're literally just telling us um, where they're at and maybe something, you know, a bit more more poetic or um, you know, a little less less direct. Uh, but I, I do I do love how like you know you said uh, sometimes the human body doesn't make any sense, and, but then when the environment sort of points out all these things to it, it, it does create this like attractive element. This shot really stood out to me. The timing is really perfect. You got snow coming through, it, shimmering. Um, you know, uh, reflections here. Um, so some really, really interesting shots and pretty, uh, pretty cohesive uh, to me. Uh, this one, last one seems maybe the least cohesive in the set just because it's such a close up uh, where the other ones feel like they're more about like scale. Uh, but it's an interesting juxtaposition with like this, like even on the left side here, like these, uh, these like electronic advertisements and it's like this man that looks like he's from like an older past and walking through this futuristic world um what do you what do you got dan on on this uh this collection that you've looked at it yeah well i, I agree <clears throat> in in large part i think the the thing that the the part the part that kind of sticks out to me is that these are i, I like that they're kind of stark um i like that they're more about there's in some cases there's the shape and the placement is is super important um i really like human on ground human and target i think human and target might be my favorite um because it's uh it almost like doesn't look like a person it kind yeah. of has like it's like a peacock or something you know it looks like some kind of uh, emblem or something and i think it it works really well um <clears throat> i like the human on death row too uh, but I also agree. I think the titles are, I think they could be a little better. Um, and, and, and I say that uh, also looking at the description of the, of the collection. And I think it would be, it would kind of help to back up a little bit and maybe rewrite that, maybe get a little bit of help because there's some things here that don't, that don't work as well for me. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think the the syntax is a little weird, and I, I'm finding that's kind of true across all of them. And I, I get that you know you can't always <laughs> if English may not be your first language, and so you kind of have to you know get a little bit of help. And I think I've said this before, but ask in the meta jungle community. Anybody would be you know you're going to get help if you just ask for it. Yeah, totally agree with that. Um, but, but I do like this. I think. The work is really good, and if you look at the artist, this is an artist we've that you and I have looked at before. Um, Let's see. We actually we actually reviewed. Uh, if you look at his created work, we had reviewed his uh, "When the Chips Fly" was his one of is one of his uh, editions that we looked at in one of our edition ones a few weeks ago. The one I, next. I know. Time. I know this one did really well. It went. Yeah. It went fast. I went fast. Like, look at that shot. Yeah. So we've looked there. at his work, and there's no question yeah. we like this photographer's work. Um, and what I would say is, I think that this collection we're looking at today, uh, I think it could use a little refining in in the text, in the in the descriptions, and those those sorts of things. So when the chips fly, it's actually you know. This one, this one didn't sell out. So um, there's uh, there's two owners, and it's a uh, he's got the price at zero point zero two. It's a twenty twenty two uh twenty two USD on this. So it's uh it's really cheap. And it's a beautiful shot too. Really beautiful. You can actually see the chip chips flying too. So um that's see that's a more creative title to me. When the chips fly. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Then. So is mirrors on the wall. So when you go from those titles to you know human in bright, I think that would be the one that really would be the most human in bright. Um, because that that actually doesn't make sense either if, if you even like from a, from the standpoint of English, um, and understand that this language barrier too. But you, you know, just they just I'd, I'd love for them to be a bit 
poetic, right? Um, yeah. I mean, Human on Death Row makes really the most sense to me on, like, maybe even just, like, on Death Row. Like, why Human on, like, on, like, maybe on Death Row or just Death Row or something could be really cool for this. This is what right. I was struggling between wh whether or not I liked this image or, um, or in, in Target more. I just think this one's just so surreal. It's just so weird. Like, I don't even know what this post is up here above the head. But like, it's like a, it's like, it's like a, it's a, it's like a uh, closed circuit camera. Yeah, it's a closed circuit camera. And like on death row, I was imagining this to be like some device that kills him when he gets to the top of the escalator or something. I'm just like, this and, is, and know. there's so many things about this too. I noticed that the person in the in the shot is wearing a Louis Vuitton puffy jacket. Yeah, I know. Me too. If you if you zoom <laughs> in close, you could see the LV. Well, you could see it out in his um in his banner. Yeah, the, L the LVs. No, um, this is this is good work. I I like it. Um, and I think I would just say that I think that you know, looking at the artist's other work, I think work on the descriptions a little bit. That would be my my number one recommendation. The titles and the descriptions. Yeah, absolutely. But otherwise, you know, the price is really attractive. So um, yeah, yeah. Like, like I said, when you know when the gas goes down, I do I do like I want uh, the death row one. But yeah, the work. So those descriptions there, and um, obviously, you know, it's, they've been out for like, you know, twenty-one days. So I don't, we'll, you know, work on the see what see what's on the Twitter. Yeah. Um, July twelfth. That's just like two days ago. I was supposed to check out my Tezos profile. So, um, looks like they have a one of one collection of Tezos. I mean, to, these are really beautiful, but to be honest with you, it looks like you're, you know, you're, you're juggling too much, right? You, you gotta you get a Tezos project that you have to, you have to, uh, advertise. Nothing has sold in your, you know, human on, human on, uh, what is it? What is it? Uh, yeah, human in the street. Like nothing is sold here. So did you just give up on your marketing for that? You know. I, so I have some opinions about this. One, of, I'm in a few different, you know, private chat groups, and people are just going nuts over Tezos right now. Um, and I, <clears throat> I'm gonna, I'm gonna give a little. I'm, I'll just tell you, I'm not on there, and there's a reason why, and it's it in large part has to do with. I think that selling work on other platforms for super cheap devalues the work you're selling on. Hundred percent. Yeah, I, 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 I don't, I don't understand why you would take um, your work and sell editions for like five dollars uh, or less on one platform, and then come over to another platform and expect to sell them for seventy, you know, fifty or sixty dollars. Like, I, I think it just because the platform everything's cheaper i don't think that's a reason to do that and I, it's the same reason why i put some work on solana and i was like this is really great i'm going to do this and then i started realizing that the prices are just super cheap and i i had a one of one collection i was getting ready to launch and i realized people don't want to pay more than like a hundred dollars for a one of one over there and that's so, silly because the gas is like nothing so they're not paying in gas and they get to pick up your piece for like five bucks Right. So why, why why don't I just go sell prints in the street in Times Square, if I want to sell my work for five dollars? Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. I mean, I, I guess I'd, I'd I'd have to look more into it to be honest. I just I, I don't want to I don't I don't want to juggle that many things though, man. Like I'm already well, I'm already you know. Well, and I and I think that's what it does. I think it it begins to it waters down what you're doing, and and it's not to say don't sell on Tez on Tezos. I'm not saying that. I'm saying make sure that the thing you're doing on Tezos isn't devaluing what you're doing over here uh, on Ethereum mm -hmm. or vice versa. And, and, and also to say like, maybe you have, maybe you're able to sell stuff for larger um, monetary value on Tezos. Great. Like that's really great. But like in this case there, I think you're splitting, you're splitting the attention in some ways. And I think you just uh, be really intentional about what you're sharing where and how much you're charging for it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the the way that I'm looking at it now is like, like I don't really want to move on to other collections unless, 
unless like the collection that I'm currently in is sold out and because then otherwise like I have to spread like, I'm spreading myself thin and like oversaturating but I know I've heard people say like oh it doesn't matter if it's on a different platform I mean but if it's but if you're advertising it on your Twitter then Twitter's the same platform so collectors are still seeing that you have two bodies of work in two different places so um yeah, there's that, you know, which I think yeah. kind of you know, devalues it a bit. If it's mm -hmm. if it's that much cheaper, you know, why are they going to spend the gas on ETH and then spend a ton more money on your work? Especially if, like, what we just looked at, like this artist that we're currently looking at, um, you know, like, I think this work is better than what we're looking at right now, right? Um, and so... If this is cheaper uh, on Tezos, then it's like, why, you know, why is the person going to want to pay Ethereum's gas fees and stuff to purchase what you currently have? Like, it would have been a better idea to sell out what you have on ETH first. But, you know, I don't know enough, really. But I know Sonny um, knows a lot about Tezos and he's on there a lot, so... Maybe he's a he's he's a he's a good voice of like reason and to try to like find a middle ground between um not devaluing your work and being able to get sales on another platform uh, yeah. as well. So, well and I think a good a good way to think about it is so like right now Tezos what is the symbol? XTZ, is that right? It's XTZ. Uh, yeah. yeah. So Tezos is currently trading for a dollar fifty three for the mm -hmm. to the US. And so if you were going to kind of think about that and you go, okay, um, <clears throat> if you went and then looked at what people are charging, um, people are charging like nine, te nine, nine Tezos, ten, you know, four or five Tezos. And we're talking about if you sh charge 10 Tezos, you're only making $15. Yeah. And like, plus I have to go buy Tezos. <clears throat> I have to buy Tezos. Yeah. I have to go down the rabbit hole like well, using yeah. the platform um yeah i just don't think it makes any sense to be selling your work for you know, just be selling them one of ones for ten dollars like i that doesn't make any sense to me at all um <clears throat> i didn't and, even and then, know people selling it for that cheap Jesus. well and, I, and here's to say this there's there, i'm looking at um i'm looking at this artist um object um profile and he's got one on there for 100 tes and that's and that's great but you're and so we're talking, but we're talking about a one of one for one hundred and fifty three dollars right now. Um, yeah. So, but then he has a few, on, a few other ones that are, you know, and and some of these are additions. But I'm sorry, but you should be making more than eight or nine dollars for even for an addition. Well, I mean, he's even doing it on here though. Like, so his one of ones in this collection are sixty eight dollars. So, right. That's why so, I'm saying like I want to pick one up. I want to. I want to to charge more and i but i also yeah. get that i get that you want to find collectors and you want to sell work i yeah anyway we've kind of beat this into the ground a little bit yeah yeah <laughs> i mean at the same at the same time now though looking that he's like not advertise like not like advertising this collection and he's moved on to like this tezos collection it, it makes me want to buy a piece of his less i just have to be fair and honest like, even though it's really cheap, it makes me want to buy it less because it's like, are you just putting out a ton of work to just, to just, you know, to, to, to just grab capital in different places? Or like, I don't know what the intention is here, right? So, and I don't know what, you know, like, yeah. So, you know, I, I'll stick to my word and I will pick this up. Uh, but now seeing that he's moved, he says, I'm working on Texas and I don't see this work anywhere. I would definitely like the artist to like at least um, focus on this project a little bit still too, right. yeah. you know. So anyway, um, hey guys, um, I'm hey. so sorry. May I just one one quick thing to add sure. to this conversation? Yeah, it's real quick because I've been part of some of those spaces that you're talking about with with Sunny and stuff. And what I'm and, and exactly those same concerns, right? That you're spreading your your work too thin and you have to now focus on so many places. One thing that I've seen some people do is they're actually burning some of their work from Foundation and OpenSea and they're moving into Tezos because the, the, the fact is and, and the reason why so many people are moving there is because it does move faster there. 
and even big big artists in our space like Leslie you guys all know Leslie you know she, she's been really killing it in Tezos and she, like she had some pieces on foundation and open sea that were there for months um and, wow. and she she moved them from there to Tezos and they went in a matter of minutes similar pricing not not any kind of cheaper pricing or anything so but um, so do the people on Tezos know her name like do they know you know what I'm saying like do, do they know oh she's Leslie Spurlock she's doing this well on the Ethereum side so her work is worth this much here or do they just see nice work and they just pay higher for it like how does it work it's a great question. I'm not exactly sure who her collect collectors are on Tezos, but I do see that uh, like she's not the only one who is seeing pieces move there faster than they are moving on Foundation and OpenSea. So I think that's that's really the draw. Now I think it's like how do you figure this out so that you don't have unsold work here and now you have more work here, right? So that's a very valid concern. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm, I just wanted to chime in that some people have been burning their work here and moving it over there. Okay, wow. And, and okay, also, cool. here that like I'm looking at uh, like Leslie. I just see there's you know there's a you know I can see her listing lots of work there. She's doing. I mean, she's on there right now listing stuff. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what what is when I'm looking at sales, I'm seeing ten Tezo sales, you know, and for additions, and and I I just. And I'll I'll say this. I mean, I would tell Leslie this to her face. <laughs> like, your work is worth way more than that. And so I just don't. That doesn't make sense to me. I, I just I feel like selling a lot, selling a large quantity can make sense. But I th I think it, you need to be start. You need to think about selling it for a lot more. Anyway, yeah. that's just my that's my opinion. I, I I mean, I, I had this conversation with Alpha the other day, and his opinion is similar to yours. So, um, yeah, you know, and and it's similar to mine as well. I mean, if they were if we were selling it for for similar prices, then it would make sense to me. Um, but yeah, I'm, but you know, at the same time, I got to sit on some in some more of these spaces and learn more about Tezos and stuff like that. But like I said, I'm just so um, I'm so busy in my own in my own uh, in my own collection and. What I've got going on in Ethereum, which is actually working out for me, so that I don't want to yeah. you know, well, spread and, and let's, myself. Let's bring it up and get a little further down here because we have one other artist that I'm actually looking at one of his pieces on object that's priced, I think, appropriately. And I think we should oh. let's bring it up when we get a little further in, in the sure, show. Sure, sure, cool. So um, this next collection is is Irish seascapes. Um, and this is this is by uh, Michael uh, McCafferty. You know, let's wait. So Irish cool. Seascapes, yeah, Irish Seascapes collection consists of images I've captured over the past three years from various coastal locations um, <clears throat> on the island uh, of Ireland. Uh, I think everyone will agree uh, we are so lucky to live on this beautiful island. I hope you enjoy this collection. Best wishes from Ireland, Michael. So uh, 10 items uh, with this one owner here. Full price at uh, 0 0.15. Um, there's, some, there's some standout uh, images uh, for me here. So I, you know, I actually, I feel like these white borders, there's a couple of shots that have like these thin white borders on them. And for some reason, I don't know why, but it does it for me. It like completes the frame. But I love this, uh, I love these, um, the shutter speed that he used here, the sunset, it's a really beautiful shot. I feel the same about uh, this one here that had that white border. There's something about it with these these photos that it really, you <clears throat> know, it, 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 it does something for me. Like, it, like, completes the image in some way. But once again, like, this this misty water that's, like, flowing over from the uh, the shutter speed that it's using, these, these opened up clouds. Like, this really reminds me of, like, what Ireland might feel like right with these greens and these uh these sort of ethereal shots but um then when i look at something like like this um manny's sunrise um it just feels like it has a lot less layers um it just feels more of an amateur shot to me it just feels like you know it just feels like a, a, a snapshot that you know someone would take above a sunset without considering 
uh, foreground, middle ground, and background. But on that, I'm, I don't want to talk too much about this because you're more of a landscape guy than me, Dan. So I'd rather you just take over from there. But like that, you know, you know, and this this is another really beautiful one to me, right? Like, so when he's considering um, the, the this uh, foreground, middle ground, background, and it feels more dimensional, and, and it it just it makes me feel and witness more of what it's about. Is like something like the sunrise or the swimmer here. I don't know. I feel like I, I feel like this could have been taken like right in Rockaway Beach, Queens, in New York, where I'm at, and it just doesn't it doesn't have any feel to me. Like this is this is Ireland, so that that would be my overall. But I, I think there's some really beautiful images in here. Yeah, um, I'm I'm a I'm a fan of these, and I I think part of the reason why I like them is because <clears throat> I don't know this area. I've never traveled there. So it's it, it feels like it's a little window into, uh, like I'll, I'll step back a little bit and say I like it when photographers uh, photograph the places that's ho that are home for them. Like I really enjoy that because I feel like it's a different. Like these feel different than what I see tourists go shoot in Ireland, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, this is beautiful. Yeah, and so for me, I really I just feel like I'm getting I'm getting the insider view here. As opposed to the tourist view, and I like that a lot. Um, and the, he, he really does have a good, a sense of these long, these long exposures. So like prehistoric, that vertical one, the second one in, that's really beautiful. Um, and I think it's it's there's some people who don't shoot this kind of stuff. The way that you would normally create something like this is you'd put a like a neutral density filter on, um, or if it's dark enough, you just you know, you just use a long, a long shutter speed, but this is really, really cool. It, I think it captures the feel of what it's like to be out kind of in these, these sort of blue, you know, golden, right in the transition between golden and blue hour. I love it. I think it's, this is great. Um, and if I'm, you know, kind of comparing them, uh, I think that one's really strong. I think there's a couple in here that, um, are maybe not as strong. So for me, uh, horn head feels like it's a little bit out of place because it's so middle of the day blue sky, and it's and it's hard yeah. because I really like the scene. I just feel like it would be so much. I'd like to see it with a little bit less of this harsh direct midday light. It's so bright, like so bright yeah. on the on the rocks and stuff here. Like yeah, like that... it it feels like it's supposed to be like this moody image, you know, and it just doesn't. It doesn't have that mood with this midday light, yeah. like you're saying. It, kind of, it kind of sticks out a little bit in the collection. That's that's kind of all I'm saying. Um, mm -hmm. But that being said, I mean, if, if I'm if I'm just you know, just as a photographer, I look at this work and I just go, hey, this makes me want to go visit there, uh, because it because it does feel so different than what I'm used to seeing uh, from Ireland. I don't. I, I like that it it feels these feel like secret uh like what it's what it's like to actually live there that's kind of how it feels to me yeah it's beautiful i want to visit ireland now i want to live in some of these uh in some of these images um, the, um when you look at descriptions the descriptions are good as well um he's got he's got a bunch of information about the places uh he's got the edition information he's got the license information how big the photo is the metadata from the camera all that stuff it's great. Just no properties yet, right? But is, has any sold? So, oh yeah, one one of them is sold. One of them that I really like is um this uh, skin Bay castle. This is so cool. I would this still recommend cool. that everybody yeah. add add to properties. I think I think that's put properties in your photos. Yeah, for sure. Let's so see. Um, use and the and the listing looks kind of it looks a little bare without them. Mm hmm. So uh, they were. They were um, they were minted, minted four months ago at uh, zero point one five. So collections just stood um, <clears throat> stood around, stagnant for a little while. Um, you don't have your uh, Twitter link on here, um, which is important, I'd say, uh, because Twitter is the bridge, right? The bridge to NFTs, basically, it's the bridge from Web two to Web three. So I would consider adding your uh, your Twitter profile on here. I also yeah. like to quick click click Twitter and. You know, check out what people are uh, are up to on Twitter during the AMAs too. But um, it's yeah. on his it's on his profile, his main profile. 
Okay. Let's go to the main profile. <clears throat> and that's one of those little things to add is that remember if as an artist, people don't oftentimes go directly to your to your total profile, so add it to your individual collections too. Now I see his um PFP and uh, now I know Michael. He's he's very supportive. <clears throat> Simply abstract volume one is collected of ten unique one of one of ones at zero point wait one of ones at zero point zero two. Okay, that's um the cheapest one of ones I've ever ever heard of. So he has a, a different collection going on right now. Um, oh yeah, these are super interesting too. <laughs> Okay, so he has born heads up here. He's wrote about it. Uh, looking forward to getting out the spectacular location again. Cool. I wonder what he's created uh, since he's gone out to it again to, to the new location uh, to the same location. Because that that is a cool, cool spot. Um, not seeing too much. Um, not seeing too much about that, this collection that is currently under review. Right. I think that's. You know, I, I think a lot of people, they sort of just like stopped talking about their current collection because the market was down and we still got to talk about, talk, talk about our work and, you know, keep it, you know, keep it fresh in people's minds. Otherwise, you know, people will forget. <clears throat> but, yeah, lovely, lovely landscape work, really beautiful mic. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't really have anything else. I, I think that, you know, uh, you know, I think they have really great shots and um, that, you know, just greater focus on it and probably just add those properties and, uh, yeah, some some stronger emphasis on, like, um, on just, like, marketing yourself a little bit better and talking about the work and, and stuff like that on your Twitter. <clears throat> but Agreed. With that, with that I can move on for sure. It makes me want to go to Ireland, definitely. <laughs> right. Um, um, so this next um, this next one is pandemic. This is by uh, Sir Khan. Uh, this is let's read here. Uh, sorry. So uh, I wanted to tell about the pandemic process that collapsed like a nightmare in the last few years of our lives. I personally experienced COVID nineteen. Uh, I received treatment for about four months to beat the disease. Staying in the hospital for ten days, especially depending on oxygen, worried me deeply about the disease. Um, I tried to explain uh, the, the trinity of mask distance cleaning and the difficulties that people experience in this painful process. I thought that I thought that these troubles and pains should not be forgotten by photographing and transferring them to future generations. The photo I took during the opening uh, of the Maria uh, Anna Greek Orthodox Church in the village of uh, Hate Takasili. I don't know to say that part. Uh, following the mass rules um, during the pandemic process, accompanied by the flow <coughs> of Muslims uh, praying in accordance uh, with the distance rules in uh, Bursa, uh, Ulu Mosque. Uh, panels are seen in uh, cafeterias that separate people um, from each other to keep the distance, keep that distance. So interesting, they're in black and white. Um, I sorted them by oldest, so we could take a look at how the uh, how the artist uh, wanted them displayed. Uh, first thing I noticed the banner bothered me a bit. I, I, I noticed this with a lot of people, and you know, even myself when I made made my first collections, I would like upload my high resolution photo into the banner, and the banner just puts it however it wants, right? It doesn't. Yeah. It's not going to put the photo how you want it to be seen. And it's like here we just have this guy's like mouth open with a spoon going in. Um, I think the best way to do it is like to look at the dimensions that OpenSea is asking for, go into a program like Photoshop or something, and then find the image you want and, and you know, crop that image into this, that, the specific like dimensions that it's asking, then upload that banner in high resolution. So like, like the banner um, here, first of all, it's, it seems like a lower res and it doesn't, it, I don't think that that's the composition that you probably want it for your banner here now just looking at these um overall so um there's you know there's 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 a couple of shots here that you know clearly i can see they're about pandemic. i think one of my favorite shots is actually the piece here the test some of the simpler shots are the ones that i enjoyed more from this so um this pc test here 
really interesting. I love the lighting on, the, on this on the guy's uh, this guy's lab coat. Um, he's he's obviously performing this this PCR test that you know, no one really enjoys <laughs> with the with the uh, the, the Q-tip or or uh, yeah the swab that they put in. Uh, wonderful composition. I like seeing it in black and white. Oh wow, he's got tons of um, tons of properties here. And Dan, how do you how do you have it show up with the percentages here? Because when I did my properties through Manifold, it didn't show the percentage that each thing had. Like seventeen percent have this trait, etc. Hmm, that's a good question. <laughs> I yeah, don't mine, know. mine don't uh, say that. There must be I, some specific. I'm curious. About it. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go look at something. <laughs> While we, someone, while we talk. All right, someone definitely knows, though. Um, but, yeah, uh, tons of information in here. Yeah, so I think, well, I, I'm kind of wondering, um, yeah, I'm looking at one of mine that's an addition, and it shows none of those. I'm trying to yeah. think of... I think I there's an extra... There's, like, an extra button that you could press to, to, to show the... Very, I guess. I did mine in Manifold. The problem is yeah. I don't have any Manifold one of ones on OpenSea to look at anymore. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I moved all mine over to Foundation. Um, <clears throat> and the only thing I have that's minted on, on here, I've got, a, I've got all my Sloika stuff, and those ones show the percentages. Mm -hmm. And... and Strange. And anything that I lazy minted, they show the percentages, but I don't... I don't have any manifold one of ones on there, so I can't really um, can't really answer that. I don't know. I always assumed it was just telling how many were in the collection that had that trait. Yeah, well, I mean, if you look at my Lost in Transit collection, many have the same trait, but I don't have any percentages written in or any of it. And maybe I could change that because um, I know Haitha CG Chris the other day he added his artist name in after all of his stuff was actually purchased. Like after selling out, he was able to actually add information in from his manifold contract. Which is, I guess yeah. a good thing. I guess that could be a bad thing too, though, because then people could remove things, right? Or yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, another another image here that was stand out to me: last mission. Um, it looks like you know this is just like these really cheap wooden caskets where um, they're um, they're Placing bodies, uh, but let me read the description. So yeah, it's I guess so. It starts with death. Uh, death is a phenom phenom phenomenon that every living uh, thing encounters. Uh, the fact of death has um, some ritual ceremonies, etc. In every society, contains uh, mass deaths have increased as a result of COVID nineteen. The contagion of COVID nineteen has prevented. People from gathering together, even at the death of their closest relatives and friends during the pandemic. In such situations, we would support each other and share uh, each other's pain. We would support each other with the understanding of pain decreases as we share. However, the sadness of, of not being able to do our last duty uh, against them and the death uh, of our closest relatives during the pandemic process hurts our hearts. My mother lost her four children, wow, uh, from COVID disease and could not attend their funerals. At that time, I understood better the people who could not attend the funerals, relatives. As a photographer, I tried to take this photo to reflect loneliness as a, of our dead and the sadness inside us. Yeah, it's definitely, um, I don't know, it's a pretty cryptic photo. That's the word that came to my mind to look at. You know, it's this guy's in a in a full full suit, um, and you know, it looks like we're looking at a, a wrapped body inside these coffins that are, you know, they're not they're not uh they're not the expensive, beautiful, uh, you know, like uh, coffins that you could uh, purchase here for lots and lots of money in the United States. So, which you know, I don't necessarily think is something that's needed. Um, I, I I just I want to just be cremated when I pass. I don't want to be put in the ground or anything like that. I, I'm fine with uh, fine with all that. But yeah, it's uh, it's a heartfelt image for sure. Um, you know, there's you know you have you have this distance image here. So I'm going by the images that make sense that 
feel related to COVID, right? So this one would be the one that felt related to COVID to me too. I just, I just don't know that this was the right timing uh, to take this photograph for me, at least. Like, I, I don't, I don't know that the decisive moment here is um, this guy about to be like mid chew with the the spoon in his mouth. It, it, it kind of, it, it kind of adds like, um, I don't know. It's, it, if you wanted to go for humor or, or, or something along those, a lot of people don't like people taking photos of them eating and stuff. I would have went for more of like a contemplative moment here with like maybe, maybe his on the table and uh, his, his, his hand on his chin or something. And yeah. or I pro you know, what does that make sense? I probably would have made waited for a more contemplative moment. You know, this is obviously about social distancing and it's kind of sad to see that, you know, we have to, we can't communicate as, as human beings. We have like these boards uh, to block it off, but um, the expression here doesn't lend to that uh, to that story um, yeah. for me. I, I'd, I'd agree with you. And I guess one of the other things that I would say about this particular collection, I, I question whether black and white is right for this collection. Um, and, and Especially I say for this that, one. <laughs> uh, yeah, and here, here's the thing is that these we, we we've put this out there in the past that we we like the documentary photojournalistic style i mean that's that is a great thing i just question whether in the modern era if black and white is the right choice for photojournalistic work and it makes a lot of sense i i i think these would be more powerful in color like i'm looking at this these scenes from in the church and this graffiti and the priest, like all of those, I think would be better in color. Um, <clears throat> and I, and I, I know that that's an artistic choice. Um, but also like, I just, I, I look through the, this artist's other work and I mean, there are some amazing, beautiful color work. So I, I so I just, that would be my, maybe my feedback is to maybe consider because they haven't sold any yet. Would it be, might be, would, it, would it maybe be better to do this in color yeah it's interesting what you say too about like a modern day documentary like should modern day documentary be in color because it's um yeah <clears throat> well because there's a good because life because you know, life is in color yeah. well i think you're, you're not going to go look in a national geographic and find an article with black and white yeah it, it, because we, that's not the under, that's not the accepted, um, it's not the commonly accepted photojournalistic uh, ethic at this point. Well, yeah, I mean, so, I guess because we live in a world of color, right? And so through photojournalism and documentary, you want to capture everything that's real, real and was really there. And so since we have the technology to be able to do that, that's probably why. It, you don't you're not going to see black and white much black and white stuff in magazines or stuff about that has to do with like reportage or um yeah. or, or and not to say that there's not an artistic uh a place for that artistically but i that will be my that's my feedback yeah i mean and, and when i was looking at this shot um uh, last night i was thinking you know it's very busy for a black and white shot um because it's you know, at least color would separate some of the busyness, right? Because with the subject and such. It's also hard for me to tie in some of this to be cohesive about COVID. Um, like, last mission makes sense. Cohesive about COVID. Distance. Um, PCR tests. But, like, I, you know, if I'm just looking particular images, you know, this is, this is a hard one for me. Is it because they're social distance? I mean, there's a lot of people in this mosque, right? So, and I, you know, I, I read and I read it and I think it's because this is, this is when they, you know, uh, restrictions were becoming more limited, but without reading it, um, you know, it's hard for me to understand how that mosque photo would be about COVID or even how this shot would, uh, would be as well. So, uh, and I think this is a beautiful shot too, like uh, compositionally, um, this, this, you know, this, this sort of like, the dimension they've created, this leads in. I love the priest eyes too. 
It's very hard to catch emotion from people wearing a mask, but it's really well done here. I don't even need his face at all. It says it, like, it, says it all in the eyes. But, yeah, so interesting collection, uh, 0 0.15. No owners yet, and, like, let's see, uh, this the oldest one was minted uh, three months ago. Artist has a... Uh, no, Twitter's not... Link, guys, it's an important one. Link your Twitter here. Maybe it's in the main. You said they have some nice color work in the main. <clears throat> Let's see, um, Yeah, so Twitter's in the main part. And I don't know what this artist to look like in currently. And that will at least get to see that, you know, in the, in the, the main tweet. So June twenty one. You know, coming up on almost a month. So probably probably a good idea to, you know, drop drop a photo from from, from one of those, talk about the work. Uh, have people remember that, you know, this project's still still alive and stuff. But yeah, with that, I mean that's all the feedback that I really have that you Dan. I'm not rugged, am I? Nope, you're good. Yeah, maybe Dan stepped away. I was muted. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're I'm, muted. Okay. I'm good. <laughs> Did you have anything else on this? You know, I don't think so. No. All right, cool. So then we can we can move on to um, "Color Is Life" by uh, by Dennis. Denise, is do you say do you say, say Den, uh, Denise or Dennis? Mm, that's a tough call. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, well, I I know uh, Dennis very well, and she's uh, she's really really cool uh, and very supportive in the community, um, and she makes beautiful work. So let's read this real quick. So collection reveals how colors affect human life: black, white, green, orange, red, yellow, blue, gray. What's your color? Um, what is the color that impresses you the most? There are nine color photographs in this collection. Collection color is life. Um, Okay, and they got the edition one of one, a license. Pro, uh, what is that, um, Dan? License primary NFT. Um, I don't know if that's enough for licensing. You know, I'm not sure. Uh, it looks like it got clipped at the bottom, like they ran out of space. So take take a look at the. Take a look at the uh, the main description, the bottom part. Copyright R. <laughs> it just kind of cuts we'll, off. We'll just go into the image and check it out. Yeah. What I would probably do is I would pull the license information out of the main collection description and just put it on the individual pieces. Yeah, so there is none, no licensing on the individual pieces. There's no properties. Um, oh, yes. Yeah. So you got to put it on. Oh, well, a couple of them do. So I'm looking at uh, green. Green does have licensing information. Um, okay. My guess is, Mike, the one the reason Dance of Colors doesn't is because it's already sold. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Like Frankie Detanky bought that one four months ago, so and it's the only one that's sold. Okay. Cool. Okay. So probably description. I'm guessing that the licensing got added after. All right. So my my uh, so I'll just give you my my honest feedback on this. Well, first of all, you got you should add your Twitter up here. Um, I think Dennis is it, Dennis Denise. I'm sorry, uh, is is a fantastic photographer. There's some beautiful images here. They really are. Like look at orange, um, gorgeous. That's just phenomenal. Look at the, the colors, the dog in the background. Like, look at the shot. Look at the shadows. Oh, there's wow. There's a dog behind the. There's a dog behind the horse too. I I wouldn't have known if I didn't see him in the uh, in the reflection there. So some beautiful images here. Um, it's just hard to tie a story together here, right? So like, so you're trying to tie this story together. Uh, well, about how green is a oh, green or blue, how colors are a mood. But what I'm seeing here is, you know, a studio shot, um, a portrait, you know, a street scene, um, you know, wildlife. Uh, you know, drone photography. Uh, so it's just, it, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't really come together as a collection. 
you got a lot of beautiful images here, right? But it, it just right. it's it, it right, but it just I don't understand it as a collection, and I don't think that you can make it cohesive just by the fact that there are different colors and how, how color draws the mood. Like this is an incredible photograph. Like look, he's I, lo I love how this this line here is like the only line that isn't done, and he's just like uh, filling it in here, and the like, the red on yellow, um, just some some really really beautiful shots, but just not just not understanding the uh, the story, right? I could, um, if you were selling, it, it would make sense to me if this was like a foundation collection back in the day when foundation let you just put your one of ones into a specific collection. But um, I, I don't know how this photo of this girl, which is a beautiful photo, can possibly tie in with, you know, with the, cow, with the cowboy shot, right? It just, right. it's just, yeah, right, Dan. So, yeah, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit, Dan, on on, on how yeah. you feel about it. So, one of the things that, that's interesting, so, and I'm I'm gonna go because the artist is a woman, so I'm gonna say probably Denise, Denise, something like that. Seem, I mean, I'm not Turkish, so I, <laughs> I don't know, but here's the thing. She, I think that she has some beautiful work, and I really like some of these. Like, I like red a lot. I like the um, the dance of colors. I really, really like the one that's entitled green and the one that's entitled yellow. For me, there's a few of these that just um, gray and beige and white. Like those are interesting, but they don't, they're nowhere near as stark or as minimalist. So for me, they, they just don't fit. And then I, my gut is that um, blue, the one with the seagull, not quite blue enough for me to be, to be blue. And I think if I were to go look through... Uh, her work, uh, I'm, I, if you pull up her Instagram account, um, there's, something, there's something that's more blue. <laughs> I don't know about more blue necessarily, but um, there are definitely some more stark color images here that I think might work a little better for some of the colors. Like I can already see one in here that's better for white. Um, All right, I have to go to the main Instagram account to see if there's yeah. a link up there. I found it for by going to her link tree, um, but her her Instagram handle is uh, oh you you probably find it there. That's what I right here. So look look down on the on the right hand side. There's one that's like it almost looks like cream puffs or like dumplings. Oh, we looking at the color blue. No, for white. Look at that one with the dumpling. Oh. They look like dumplings, right? Wow, they do. Like I guess they're you sandbags. That. To me, that's a super interesting photo that I, that would be great for white. Yeah, I like his shadow here. They're like marshmallows too. <laughs> yeah, and then there's one. Go down a little bit further down the grid. Mm -hmm. um, there's another one right in the middle with a big giant blue cloud of smoke. This one here. Yeah, like that's th to me that's a really interesting photo. Um, maybe it could be blue. Um, so I, I say this just to say that I think that if you're going to focus on color, I think that using these images that are more stark, I think works better. I think having a busy documentary style photo doesn't work as well for if you're going to land on the idea of color. Mm -hmm. This shot is sick. I remember seeing this the other day in Colorado. That's really cool. It's, yeah. Yeah. Like this, like the, the, uh, the green on pink. And then just like these, like this target, like layered into layered, and then the white petting the dog and the fractions like going on there. Such yeah. a talented artist. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, so I mean, that's my honest feedback for this collection is that it just it doesn't it doesn't feel like a cohesive collection. It feels like a, a random random set of set of different images that are based in um, <clears throat> a specific color. A lot of beautiful images in here, but yeah. it's just it's it's hard to uh, it's a hard to sell as an actual collection for me. Well, I think this is an interesting project idea, and 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 I would I would maybe um, you've sold the one and that's cool, and I would maybe think about you know you you have a big body of work here, so going through and and curating a little bit more like the one of the girl with the sheep that just doesn't work for me. 
that there's not a no me too yeah. defining color there and i think just looking through your instagram account you have better you have better beige i can see better beige stuff in the instagram account so that will be my feedback is that you ha actually have work that fits this better mm -hmm. yeah okay cool well, yeah beautiful work <clears throat> just, uh, yeah, we'll just consider um uh, yeah I, I would I, I would consider figuring out I guess since this one is sold how to how to either making a collection that works with this dance of colors uh, photograph and possibly well, using these one of ones <laughs> for something else well and I, I'll just say this it's Frankie that owns it just reach out and say hey I'm thinking I'm gonna change up this collection a little bit I'm, Frankie's probably gonna be cool with it if you just say I want to, I want to do a little bit of uh, reconstructing some of the stuff in this collection to make it fit better. Uh, if you decide, decide to make a change, if you don't want to change it, hey, we're just a couple guys <laughs> with opinions. <laughs> exactly. Cool. Um, all right. Next one's a small collection. This is um, the Lights of a Long Life. This is by Wahid. Yeah. Dot car, and it's just the description here. Oh, she says here's a collection of creative images. There are descriptions on the individual. These are really beautiful. And so yeah. um, I think this is like what you were saying that you did, Dan, like something similar, like like the layering. Yeah. Um I'm I'm looking to see if there's any description of how he Well, the second the second photo says it has the layering, but this one doesn't. I'm gonna but, look at the descriptions. This, Oh yeah, okay. So the second one, a, a Nova, Lun, Lova, Nova Lunosis. Uh, the description says the state of relaxation and wonderment experienced while gazing upon the stars. An image I created from two of my photos taken at the same location, location which is one of the darkest places in the UAE. Um, and so I don't know exactly how they're blended, but it does say it's a composite. In the image, it says that there's an image. It says image type composite. Yeah, yeah. These um, are sick. And here's what I would what I would say like this is really this is really beautiful, and and I think it's I actually like composite work when people say hey I'm making a composite I'm making something that's fantasy something that's that is different and and I think the biggest thing that's kind of usually a dead giveaway is that <clears throat> the lighting is directional right and and it wouldn't be directional in real life <laughs> like the dunes wouldn't have that much light on them. But but it's yeah. still, and I and I really like it. Also, this the the Milky Way, the the imagery from the Milky Way is really beautiful. Uh, it has really great color work. It's processed really well, and it's really interesting. So I'm a fan. I like that. I think I like the first one better. Um, Solace and solitude. Um, like I I I, I really enjoy it. It's. <clears throat> The, the balance and weight of it works really well. Yeah, it's got that dimension to it too. That's just really. This one actually it feels. feels awesome. Awesome. I think it feels, even though it's kind of fantastical, I it kind of it kind of works better as like an actual scene for me. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yeah. um, let's, let's let's talk a little bit about. Um, these are priced at point three five. Point Twelve days ago, yeah. Um, so, we're we're kind of, it's interesting to kind of talk about where things are. There, there's been a little bit of an uptick in people collectors buying one of ones over the last week or so. Um, yeah, but we're also still in the middle of you know this edition season. People are really. I actually had, <clears throat> what wasn't me? A friend of mine. You guys know Jason O'Rourke. Um, Jason mentioned that he was talking to a collector who just flat out asked, it, it, are photographers moving towards editions as the preferred way to sell art? So a collector actually asked him that, which I thought was, was interesting. Um, that the maybe answer is no. <laughs> well, and, and yet, here's something that's interesting to think about. If you are selling, if you're an artist selling prints, it is almost unheard of to sell a one of one in the print world, in, in the photography print world. It, it doesn't, true. It, it almost never happens. So it's normal for us to sell editions of, to sell print editions. It is, um, 
And I wonder if we're starting to move towards that being um, maybe not preferred, but being a very normal thing that we do alongside selling one of ones. And that it's not as cheap or uh, as lesser. I think it's the blockchain that makes it easy to buy a one of one. And, it, and it's, yeah. it's in real life that makes it harder to, to create a one of one and have it be um, verifiable as one of one. I think, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think one well, of one yeah. is, is, is a big thing for collectors. So I'll also, tell you that. Mm. I don't like selling, I don't want to sell a one of one print because I don't want that to be the only one I can sell. Like, I. Yeah. I there's something to me that just feels restricted about it. But with NFTs, I'm more willing to do that because and this is a weird this is a weird opinion, I think. I don't think of the NFT as the definitive canonical version of my photo. That's me as an artist. You mean um, like the root the image? Yeah, yeah. So if I sell a one of one to someone, that doesn't that doesn't mean that I can't also sell prints of it. It doesn't mean that I can't you, also you can, yeah. Yeah, yeah can. I can sell it to to companies. I can you know do other stuff with it. I'll never sell another NFT of it, but it doesn't mean I can't do other things with it. Whereas if I sell a one of one print, that kind of and this is maybe just psychological. It feels like I'm kind of closing off what I can do with it going forward. And I know that that's yeah. kind of, that's a silly distinction, but I think that it's normal to think that additions are going to be more normal. Now I, I think spun it, yeah, a, a weird way to say. Um, I like these. I, these these images are really beautiful, and I think they're great one of ones. Um, uh, we had reviewed some of Wahid's stuff uh, a few weeks ago, um, and when I look at this, is all of the work he has on Foundation. And if I go look at his, uh, and I follow him, he's he's really makes some really beautiful art. Um, I'm kind of curious how this fits into his overall scheme of things oh yeah he had this uh this uh yeah, edition collection is sick yeah yeah I, I think he's just a really talented artist um and i i think this this work is great i'd like to see it get in front of more people um get some bids going on it yeah for sure yeah i i mean there's not there's not that much more we could really talk about just because it's two images and you know they're both really great, and uh, love to see it. See them move. Yeah, the quality is the quality is there. I there's no reason why these shouldn't do phenomenally. They're beautiful work. Absolutely, cool. With that, Wahid, congrats there. My yeah, and I'll just say this: he's, he's promoting this work. It's his banner on Twitter. It's his pinned tweet. Um, so this is the new stuff. This is what he's showing off. This is what he's working on. And also, Excellent. I also know this because he and I've been. Uh, uh, chatting through 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 GM posts that he is on a trip to K two right now to go uh, up to sixteen thousand four hundred feet at base camp and take some photos up there for a couple nights. Wow, that's awesome! I'm kind of jealous. That's cool. Me too. <laughs> Me too. <clears throat> Sounds fun. Awesome. Cool. Uh, with that, let's move on. Um, yeah. So mountains in monochrome. Um, by Bantu Day. I think I said that right. Bantu Day? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Mountains are calling and I must go. John Muir. Mountains are my first love and they have provided me with endless moments of pure joy. These memories captured in Monaco were timeless in my heart and now reside timelessly on the blockchain. Color is dis descriptive. Black and white is interpretive by Elliot Irwin. With each photograph comes a world of interpretation where the depths and shadow draw on my deep feelings and memories of past encounters in the mountains. Come take a look. Choose your memory. Find meaning along these ridges, interpreting them as you wish. Um, Bande, he's a, he's, he's a really good writer. I've read a lot of descriptions of this too. Right? Yeah. Really, yeah. really good writing. So series is a five. Three are available. Congratulations, two have actually sold. The first two were sold to a uh, NorCal guy. Oh wow, that's a that's a that's a really nice buy because he's he's really well known in the space. I think actually, um, he, NorCal guy had a NFT uh, New York City. He had a, a display in the um, 
in the IPIC movie theater of his collection. So yeah. that, that's a that's a big collector. So uh, good for you. That's a, that's amazing. And so. These are all right. really and I think here's what I'll, I'll just say this. So, so I've been talking with Bondu for a few months um, after, I think kind of after um, he had showed me some of his work when I was asking for uh, people to submit work for me to buy. And I, I didn't end up choosing it. And then the one I wanted got snagged by somebody else. But I like, this feels like a refinement of his style. Yeah, it is. I've been seeing work like this from him for months, but this feels like it's like he kind of pulled it all together into something that's really great. I agree. And I'm excited to look through them. It's like I just get excited when there's a like a collection. It's just you know, click of a button, boom, and you know we have uh, the next image. It's an interesting shot too. Lots of light, light and shadow play. I didn't even notice the first time I looked at this that there's this like little moon up here. Yeah, it's great. Very, very pretty. This is the other one. I think this is the one that after this one and the first uh, panoramic one the, uh, that we looked at. I love the that's black cool. and white here. Tonality is so rich. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Yeah, I love how simple and minimal it is. These simple, minimal close-ups. I'm actually a huge fan of this one too um this one really stood out to me i i <laughs> i really enjoyed like seeing the layers in this and this this um what are these electric poles i love this electric pole in here like this man the man-made structure within you know all, all these 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 uh these nature's ridges here it, yeah. uh, it shows really shows the scale it goes into the the one further way and Makes you feel small in this large, large piece. Beautiful job. Yeah, good. This is just great work. I'm, I'm a big fan. I like it. Yeah. Is that somebody up there? It's just. A oh no, that's way too big to be a person. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I'm about scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this stuff is. Um, this works really, really beautiful. Good to see that he uh, minted on a sloika, and um. Some really, uh, really great descriptions too through all these. You know, you know I don't. I'm not going to go ahead and read it because it's like already two forty and we're only like halfway done. We talk about a lot of stuff today, but yeah, I love the images. Love how descriptive he was with each one. Seems like he really went and you know did it, did it right. You know, like I told people, like you know, it's best. To, just do it right the first time, right? Right. Well, right, that's right. But <laughs> that's one of the nice things about the way Sloika is put together. Is it, it kind of forces you to do it right? Yeah, you have to fill out a spreadsheet, basically. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so really, uh, really, really wonderful, wonderful work. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it because I don't really have anything, really have anything constructive mm -hmm. here. You know? Yeah, I don't think so either. I think it's, I think it's well put together. Good job. Yep, 0 0.25. Nice. I would like to see more of those go. Agreed. All right. All right. Uh, next collection. This is the, um, the Core Traveler. Um, and this is by um, uh, a, uh, a, a, a Runk. You have the name uh, pulled up? Uh, oh, oh, Aaron. I'm sorry. It's Aaron, um, Aaron uh, Kumar. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm. I'm just gonna also throw out here. I, I mean, we just went from Slyka over to Foundation. I, I'm. Foundation keeps making small tweaks to the way they do things, and I just love the way they present the artwork. I do Big too. Fan. I just wish that like I could use the arrow key and go to the next image. <laughs> yeah, and I can't. I, and this yeah. constant having to press the back arrow to go to the next image is like. Annoying. Like, it's, it's, it's 2022. Why? Like, why do we have to do that? Um, I think they could. They could. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they have the money on the uh, team to you know, make that yeah. possible. Anyway, yeah. um, description: The poor traveler is a collection which depicts me as a traveler who has the dream to travel around the world uh, with the little money I have. As a, as a travel photographer, I want to showcase the best and most outstanding pictures 
uh, through my lens of nature. A travel photographer based in uh, 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 Telangana, the southern part of India, uh, Dr. Aaron Kumar uh, Nalimela uh, is a self taught photographer. So, well, he, he, I thought this was the poor traveler. He's a doctor <laughs> with, na <laughs> with nature, wildlife, and stream as the main area of focus and capture all types of genres. Okay. Um, so, let's take, a, let's take a look. Yeah. Traveler is traveler with two L's. It probably is, right? It just looks weird. It just looks weird here. Yeah, it looks a little odd. Is it me? Is it here? Is it E L? Yeah, I think it is with two L's. Okay. So nature's nature's symphony. First shot we have here. Really moody. Uh, really moody shot. My favorite part of this shot is actually just this golden light back here and the clouds, like. Right. Super yeah, dark this, and yeah. This is a slow shutter to get clouds like this down. Um, you know, I don't not not necessarily. I mean, it depends. I mean, the clouds can be doing cool stuff like that. Oh yeah, because oh. the water's the water's not on a slow shutter. It's regular. Also, uh, Aaron posted in the in the chat, Doctor Who left everything for photography. Oh wow. Okay. Well, props to you. Jeez, that's, that's oh amazing. also also. I got to give a shout out here. Bondu said the idea of the collection for his the previous one we looked at came from um, from me, <laughs> which is kind of cool. From you, awesome. What? What? Uh, in what? In what way? What do you mean? Dan? Sorry, there's crazy loud dogs in my house right now. Give me a second. <laughs> my daughter's taking them for a walk, and they're freaking out. <laughs> Okay, there we go. They are outside. It just shows we're all real people with real lives outside. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> we have hard floors and the dogs get super excited and they yeah. make a lot of noise. Well, there's anyway, a lot of there's a lot of layers in the image. I, I, yeah. the, the background is really where my eyes want to be though. Like like the foreground is a little bit less for me. Well, maybe you could break this down better better than I can as a landscape well, photographer. Okay. So for me, when I look at this, there's a couple, I, I have a couple little, a couple critiques here. I, first of all, I like this scene. I love the clouds. I love the color, that deep turquoise aqua blue. Um, I think that's really beautiful. The, the foreground down at the bottom, this kind of peninsula that sticks out into the water, it's bothering me that it's so incredibly dark. Um, and I know that, you know, maybe this is, what it looked this like part. yeah i just feel like that area is just kind of crushed and we're and and here's what i what i feel is that perhaps the image would be better if it were cropped a little bit so that that either wasn't in it or you went and did some some uh some localized adjustments to see just bring it up a little bit and i know that if it's crushed there may not be a lot of data there but it feels like probably you could pull up i'm, I'm guessing there's a little more detail there and I, I say that because you're getting great detail in the clouds, <clears throat> which tells me I think there's probably some shadow detail that's still happening down in that foreground. Is this hay is this like haloing here, like this white line that's on like these these mountains here? See, that, that's that... kind of it's hard to say without looking at the like with a I'm looking at it on foundation. Because it, it could just be it could just be the clouds, right? Yeah, yeah. Um because it because it's none here. Bit. Well, this is this is one of those things where look at the other side. There's a little bit of what looks like a little bit of a halo, and, oh, and so this is, yeah. Mm -hmm. So here's what I would maybe do, is to think about you could just use a brush, in in Lightroom or Photoshop and kind of bring that halo down a little bit. Um, that might might help. Uh, but I think you've got a great image to work with here. I just would maybe think about if you've got some distract if this foreground is a little distracting, um, because it's so dark. That that's just kind of my my gut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe what, is this, what, what does that image look like? Is like as like a panoramic? Like what I just like created. Like, why didn't it? Yeah, screenshotting on. PCs. Oh, it probably dumped it, dumped it on a different uh, page or something. <clears throat> no, it always yeah. lets. 
It always asks me, do I want to say that? But I, yeah. I like my eyes are like my eyes are like here in the image. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, and that's so. This is one of those things where the sky is super interesting. So thinking about, I actually like having a little bit of the water on the bottom. I just don't mm -hmm. want so much. I don't want that black part. But um, that's just, I mean, just being nitpicky, right? Um, yeah. Interesting image. Um, one thought I have is um, your pricing is pretty. You've got yeah. a pretty short pricing range here, and I think that I don't know that I would have one at one ETH. There's four then, prices. Uh, yeah, four yeah. prices, right? Yeah, I, I think I would, you know, kind of be somewhere in the middle um, to make these uh, feel a little more like it makes more sense. Yeah, this one is, um, you know, 10 times less than the other. And, you know, I, I think it's the weakest image. I do. And I mean, that tells me that you do, too, though. Um, so, you know, when I opened it, I was like, because I couldn't really figure out what the subject is here. Uh, it, it felt like this was a train. But then I realized that it's like, it looks like it's like housing. Um, I don't know if it's. Then it looks like the houses are like sideways and the roofs are, are over here. And it's like a manipulated image. I have no idea. Um, but this whole the editing looks strange too around the, around the trees here and the, the. I don't know if this is water or sky either. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe you want to talk about this image a bit because you understand editing of landscape better mm -hmm. than I do. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, there's a, so if you, if you just turn your head, it's immediately obvious what you're looking at. <laughs> like, Oh, it's flipped. Oh, now yeah. I know it's reflection. It's house reflections. I just flipped my laptop over to the right. Yeah. I'm silly. Yeah. Okay. And, and I, I don't, I don't think it's uninteresting. Like, so I don't want it to that, but I, I, I do think that, um, if you're going to flip it like this, it might make sense to use some perspective distortion to make it line up in the middle like that could yeah. be a good way to kind of give it more symmetry because the fact that it's not symmetrical side to side kind of throws me off a little bit um mm -hmm. but ultimately i agree i agree mike i don't know that it is the rest of it doesn't i don't think it's strong it, it feels a little out of place in this collection oh like like this is way stronger i think on comparison you know like yeah this this man like uh, he's like in mid paddle on this flower boat, um, and the water just looks really interesting. Um, with, with all that foam that comes up to the top of the water, the blues colors are really gorgeous. It's like the the the, the man is the same exact color as the ocean. Yeah, it's a not, yeah, it's a really yeah. poor poor choice of outfit if you um if you fall off the boat because helicopter is not find <laughs> not gonna find you. <laughs> I right. used to do, I, yeah, I used to do search and rescue in the U.S. Coast Guard, and you, know, you don't want to wear uh, this. You know, you don't want to wear ocean blue when you're out surfing. It's <laughs> a good, a great photo. I really beautiful. Yeah, one, this this darker and it's funny because looking. At the other pieces, then you notice the blue in this is kind of similar to Nature's Symphony, to the the blue colors in Nature's Symphony. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, very, I like that. It's a very and dark. It, blue. it also kind of, um, yeah. There's there's something about it that I like. Um, mm -hmm. Ooh, elephant eye, beautifully minimal, right? Oh, I yep. oh I get I get it. Elephant. This is like an elephant. This is the eye right here. Yep. <clears throat> wow. This is good. I think. I think if we're gonna if we're gonna pick a little bit here, it's that you know maybe maybe the eyes can deceive you. Is maybe it's an interesting photo. I don't know that it fits the collection quite as well. Um, and I think the price is, you know, I, I it seems weird to have point one next to point seven point seven five and one eighth. Yeah. Um, if I um. Yeah, I don't know that I have a whole lot of other feedback for this one. No, I think that's a I think that's a great image. I think this is a great image. I think this this is I think this could be a great image if there's a little bit done on the editing side. Uh, like I said, I'm really drawn to the top portion of the image. Had it been like cut in half like a like a panoramic style. Um and then there's uh there's this image too. Um which is a, it's definitely a beautiful image because I, I love the separation of the, of the horse, um, yeah. the depth of this 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 photograph, 
um, you know, these, these green, these green roof um, ends. And then up here is really interesting, right? These trees yeah. with the, with the, uh, with the, with the fog coming through. Gorgeous uh, colors. Colors are really nice too, but it, it, it's also, it, it also feels a bit weird in a collection that has, um, you know, this boat, right? <laughs> and like this well, like um yeah. so let me let me let me say something here mike i <clears throat> so when i look when i think about the collection and I, this is okay I, i'm i'm an apologize i'm gonna apologize up front aaron because this kind of feedback sucks for stuff that you've minted um and although gas is cheap now so it's not that expensive to fix things but let me just say this i feel like a you need to have a more cohesive theme if you're going to make a collection like i i think that it and i'm guilty of this i have put together collections where i say hey these are all pictures i took in oregon or these are all pictures that are the top in my portfolio and i'm going to just tell you from my experience and from what i see as a collector and i don't i don't have a massive collection but i've got like 60 images i've purchased when i look at collections I want the collection to have a theme that makes sense. And that mm -hmm. and just saying these are images from my travels, to me that's not a theme. And uh, like black and white is not a theme. Um uh, pictures taken on film is not a theme. And trust me, I've tried <laughs> a few of those. I feel like these are interesting one of one images, but I don't feel like that they necessarily if I saw all these images, they don't look like they go together to me. Yeah, I mean, if we looked at these in a gallery, I might think that it's a different photographer. Exactly. That, and I, I think that's, and I don't mean for that to be a harsh criticism, because I think you have some really beautiful images here. I just don't think they go together as a, as a collection. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really important what you said about how, you know, film is not a theme. Black and white is not a theme. I see, a, I see very often where people think that they can edit every photo to be the same high contrast taken at the same time of the day, black and white, and that makes it a collection and it makes it cohesive. It only makes it cohesive in the way that it looks. It doesn't make it cohesive in the way that it feels. And I think thinking about how making things cohesive in the way that they feel is something that is overlooked. Yeah. And so while this, you know, is a, is a, is a collection of mm -hmm. images from your travels, um, you know, I, I travel too, but I also separate the images on my travels, right? So if I'm out shooting landscapes, it doesn't go in the same category as if I'm shooting the, um, the, the, the you know, the women that are putting, that are, that are uh, doing the local market that day, uh, right. you, know, you know, so that would be a different collection for me. And so when you take, take, you know, so I, I wouldn't, you know, like I went to Ecuador recently and I wouldn't make a collection called Ecuador and have different genres of photography in there because it's from Ecuador, because Ecuador is not a theme. It's just a place. So I, 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 yeah. I, I definitely <clears throat> echo what Dan said very intelligently. So, yeah. Perfect, and I'll say this as well. Um, I'm looking through uh, the artist's Instagram account and I, I'm seeing a lot of work that I like better that I think um, is m maybe um, even fits that theme better. Yeah, and that happens a lot. And I think it's because, you know, it's hard for me too with my, my, um, my collection, my Lost in Transit collection. Sometimes I think my best shots are my best shots. And then I show it to a bunch of different people and, you know, they like completely uh, different ones than the one that I thought was the best. And I'm like, oh shit, you know, you know, it was like, you realize, you know, uh, we need multiple eyes. Look at some, wow, look at some, what's this? Yeah. yeah that's cool. um, yeah, I agree. There's something. So I say all this to just, to just say, Hey, you know, I think that there's some curation is really the active, you know, the, the, the thing that I'm kind of hinting at here. Yeah, is that awesome. you have the you have the makings of a lot of really beautiful collections here, and I don't think that the pieces you've chosen are actually a very good 
it's not a it's not a great cohesive collection. Yeah, agreed. And the photographer is really good. Wait, let me see. Look at this portrait. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Okay, cool. I think we said what we said and um, <clears throat> give some good feedback here. So thank you yeah. for that. Um, thanks, thanks, Aaron, for showing your work. We can move on to um, the Slicker collection. Connect slash disconnect. <laughs> by uh, Saram Mahmoud. And it's an emotional um, artist statement. I read it before, maybe kind of sad. I'll read it again. Connect, disconnect, a collection that talks about personal loss, recovery, and rediscovery of oneself. These images hold a very important place in my heart as they signify what I went through after losing a very close friend. I started my photography after going through this difficult phase. I used my friend's camera more as a shield uh, at first, a shield from those uh, around me who constantly forced me to be social and not in the friendliest ways. I was first the outsider because of my newly developed isolated nature, uh, and I was later the outcast as considered by many around me. In this way, the camera became somewhat of a bridge for me. Just like a bridge connects two places while disconnecting other places, my camera connected me to the world around me while also disconnecting me from direct physical interaction. These images represent how disconnected I was from everyone and everything around me, even though I was so close. I think that is why I love taking pictures of isolated people on top of bridges, bridges that connect two spaces while disconnecting others. It's recommended to view each image and read each description if you want to follow the story told in a, a very a brief way. So, uh, ver, you know, really well written uh, statement. It sounds like the artist, you know, had a very close friend that had passed away and went into, and the artist went into uh, this isolated state. And maybe some people who um, weren't as close as the uh, as uh, as he was to that friend or didn't know that friend. Um, just trying to force the artist in, back into being uh, social and, um, you know, re really quickly uh, w without integrating his, uh, his friend's um, his friend's passing. And so I thought the artist statement was really, really well written. This banner up here. Uh, you just have to yeah, yeah. Top of some, someone's head here. So we'll work on that. Dimensions. And Sorted. So, uh, collections of 10, uh, 10 are available, so I'm going sold so far. And collections meant to be read. Yeah, we should just scroll through those and look, because I think that it, it makes... Let's scroll through first before we read anything. So, I mean, what I get from, from this does act. So, there's a clear distinction between isolation and solitude, right? Uh, many of the images that you see in my uh, my fairy collection are solitude. They're moments where people are in um, this peaceful, like bliss state, where they're like lost um, in something nice. Where isolation is more like separation from separation from things, and it's more about loneliness and sadness. I'd say. And, I could really feel it as I go through these images. They they don't feel as much about solitude, and they feel more about isolation and loss. And so I think um, that's a good thing in in regards to the fact that um, photographer is able to capture moments in life that actually lend from his soul, uh, which is not an easy thing to do. Like if I was to go out and just try to capture pictures of people that I felt were isolated, it would probably be pretty, pretty difficult to make that distinction between solitude and isolation. But I think the artist did a really good job here on this. Yeah. So if you, but if I think this, this is, and this is an interesting one. Every, <clears throat> every image has a very brief description and it takes the whole picture takes on completely different meaning if you read it. I, yeah, and I and I, I did. Um, I, I first went through the collection without reading the description because that's what I do. You know, I, I'm a photographer and I read things visually. 
So I, I, I visually read the story myself without it. And I remember going through it and getting to this point over here and being like, ooh, this doesn't feel like isolation. This feels like solitude. It's like he did, I thought to myself, he didn't nail it on this one for some reason. And then I read the descriptions. And so, and then I realized that, that you know, this part, this championship one, and I found them. Uh, they let me be myself. Uh, they let me have the time I needed. To be and then the last image. <laughs> And the last image is um, is grounded again, um, uh, and I found color in my life again. I found the beauty. And so normally, while I would say like you know why is there one color image in a series of uh, black and white? It bothers me. Um, I guess it has some symbolism within this within this collection. Okay, so so let me let me just address this because I I like the concept of it. But I, but I feel like it relies a little too much on the text <clears throat> and the images. Um, <sighs> I want the images to to tell the story on their own without the text, and that's so I'm finding myself a little bit torn. Like I like the idea of it, I like the overall story, but I don't. The the images just don't speak to me on their own without the text. And that's tricky in a visual medium. It's going to be, I think that's a difficult thing to, when you're asking people to collect an individual piece, um, uh, <clears throat> telling an, an entire story through the entire collection. I like, I, like I said, it's an interesting idea. I just don't know that it's, for me personally, that interesting. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't, I think it's too spread out. It relies too much on the text. But, and that's just, Maybe that's my personal thought on it. Um, no, I, I I agree. I agree with that. Um, and you know, so like, like let's see, for instance, this image. Um, I I wouldn't have got that from the text, like from this. Like, I don't I don't see this person who is like, who I believe is like a, a woman, um, like like walking through this. I don't believe them to ever these two people. Like it, it from the image, it just seems like. Um, uh, a passerby, but from this it says, you know, and then he left one day suddenly, and so from the image, I'm, this is supposed to be um, him leaving them one day suddenly. It, it doesn't I, that doesn't exactly align with what I got from the image. Let's see, gone. Um, he was off to his next journey, leaving uh, everything. Uh, so. You know, I, I mean, you know, I don't assume anything, anything, but I think clearly that this is this is a woman. I know that they have to cover. So I, I wonder if the, the artist is just, you know, forcing a title because he has to have a title to go with the story. But that I don't, I don't, I'm not getting that from these images. Well, and it, you... it, I think it's a tough one for me because I just don't, uh, it doesn't connect with me personally. That doesn't mean that it's not good work that doesn't mean that these aren't that it's not an interesting story i i think i question whether it how well it works as as a as a collection of one-on-ones like on sloika and that's just my yeah the stronger you know. work for me is like um i would say is like this shot like i think the minimalism shots like this shot this shot here, I think these are like more minimalistic pieces that yeah. that do work better for me. And as far as and, and as far as isolation goes, um, this one's kind of interesting. Um, this I this one here was like a, I think a stronger piece for me. Like how how all these pieces you know connect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. So so maybe let's take a look at what other work that this artist has. <coughs> Sure. Let's go to Instagram. Yeah. Um, because I think you, I and I pulled up Foundation, and I feel like um, there's some in, you know there's some interesting work there. There's some other things that I think are for me within the Foundation. Um. Let me let me look at Instagram with you. Yeah. So I, I mean, 
this is there's some there's some some really interesting pieces in here. Um, yeah, I, this is the part that's a little tricky. It's it's always weird to give criticism where it you know it feels like we're kind of saying hey the thing you did maybe isn't is kind of a miss. I just feel like it's it might it's kind of a miss for me as a collection. Um, I don't find it. I think it's, um, I want to see more use of the visual medium. And I feel like the, the tech, it just it, it relies way too much on the text for me. I, yeah, I agree that it relies too much on the text. But like, you look at the shot from Instagram, yeah, like, I don't think the yeah, shot right. needs, it needs any text, like, to convey something to me. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. But and, you said there I, was I, other work on foundation from the artist? Yeah. <clears throat> If you just go um, click on the, uh, click yeah, on the t Twitter profile. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can go right the... here. Oh, this is not foundation. This is right Yeah, and there's a foundation link right there. Yes. With a wild shot. <clears throat> I think if I were going to give, you know, just overall feedback to the artist, uh, Saram, I think is how you say her name. I just, I feel like <clears throat> what I'm seeing when I look at, you know, the, all these foundation pieces and I look at, and these are probably, looks like they were probably minted on the old, um, on the old foundation uh, contract. I think what I'm seeing is when I look at your Instagram account, I see a, a very solid aesthetic of street photography, and I'm not seeing that in the stuff you've minted. Like I, I see um, <clears throat> a consistent look to what you do. Um, it's more st straightforward street. Um, really interesting angles, um, interesting color. And I, I feel like I'm seeing more artistic, um, a more of an artistic identity in your Instagram account. And the stuff that I'm seeing on that's minted in the blockchain is not, it doesn't, I don't think it has a look that's, that's your look, if that makes sense. Yeah, the, I mean, I have another feedback too, is the artist has lots of work. All these places like the Going Tree, um, connect on like uh, everyday frames on OpenSea, monochrome streets on Jack, additions on OpenSea, this foundation one ones on Known Origin, Tezos. Um, yeah, there's a lot of lower work out there. And, uh, again, we have to be more conscious of minting. Like, we don't need to mint everything, guys. And just because we have more minted out there doesn't mean that we're going to generate more sales. Yeah. You can think about what your legacy is, and what your uh, what your your main focus is as a photographer, and why you shoot the things that you do, and what is the important work to you, and focus on a, a collection heavily uh, in that regard, rather than spreading out um, <coughs> your, your yeah. stuff to yeah. all different places. So, well, I think that, and maybe that's kind of what I'm getting at is that I don't. Your goal as an artist should be that you have work that everybody sees and they go, they immediately say, "Oh, this is Saram, this is his work." And I'm not, I'm not seeing that when I look across all the different stuff here. The one place that I do begin to see a, a, a cohesive vision is in your street photography. On Instagram. Yeah, yeah. I mean, part of part <laughs> of the whole part of the whole process of becoming an artist, you know, uh, takes a long. It takes a long freaking time to figure out who you are as an artist, like what you're, what you're, you know, it took me a long time to realize that, like, okay, I'm, what I'm good is at is finding a subject, uh, usually a human being in, ice, in an isolated space and telling a story based off of a, a movement or emotion that they create with their own environment. So my work is, is just 
what I'm able to do is from me because naturally I was just able to do this. I wasn't able to find out that I was able to uh, isolate a person and create a story with like a less is more and tell a bold story out of something that was very simple. But it took me like years and years and years and years. Of, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, 10 years to figure out, okay, well, it's not macro, it's not landscape, it's not this, it's, you know, a specific type of street photography that I'm good at, you know. And so I think that this, this artist is just in this de a developmental uh, stage. And, and it's okay to be in that developmental stage where you're still trying to find out exactly, you know, it looks like, it looks like they're drawn to street. And so now it's just time to find out, like, what what your natural ability with the street um is that you could tell the world that you know that you're that you're good at con conveying from within so that you know that's um you know that's what i would have to say about it is i think that the artist is still in a, de a develop developmental stage of trying to figure out what what type of um genre and um and, and niche that they're they're really good at as far as storytelling goes right well, good. Well, let's um, let's move on a little bit. Sure. Um, so the uh, the next collection here is uh, Natives of High Valley, and it's by Akshay uh, Nayak. Nayak, I can say, say it. As a travel and street photographer, I like to take long strides across India to capture emotions of her vivid culture. This is a collection of faces that sing of beauty amidst simplicity. And ethnicity of uh, Lad Ladakh, Ladakh, Ladakh. Some You're on your own. <laughs> on my own. <laughs> okay. Um, cool. So a portrait collection. Colin Stoyka. So let's let's open it up. Let's so, let's do to open it up big. Okay. Right. Maybe this looks better on white. That's a really cool image right there, right? <clears throat> That's actually black. Uh, when you open it up, yeah, that's a beautiful moment captured in time. I love her, her, finger, her, her uh, index finger and thumb how it comes together. She looks she's just like she's just singing into the wind. The the, the movement perfectly captured. The movement color relationships are really beautiful. Uh, purples on blues and gold and uh, yeah, not much to not much criticism to really. That's a fantastic photo. Really yeah, is. fantastic photo. Um, moving on to the next shot, seems a little bit more like like film or something though. Compared to this, yep. seems a little bit more punchy, colored, digital. This seems a little muted film shot. So a little bit different. Another beautiful photograph though. You know, great composition. I love where they captured them within the frame, not necessarily in the middle, just a little bit off to the left. Gazing out, love his expression, love the red on the light blues and all the different gradients of blue. And uh, I enjoy this shot too. Mm -hmm. you, you like this one, Dan? I do. I do. Um, it's also, I mean, I'm just looking at the uh, the the description too. It's it's kind of interesting. This is like <clears throat> this is like a little a little kid who's a monk. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah, like that's really an interesting i i want to know more about it right yeah i mean it's a wild endeavor to take on uh, especially as a kid i mean it's um to be a monk uh, comes with a lot of uh, discipline and responsibility and um loss of a lot of freedoms in life uh to be a monk so it's kind of a beautiful thing that I took that step uh, this is a nice shot um my least favorite so far of the three. Um, with her expression, it's nice. I mean, it seemed, it seemed like a, it's a bit, you know, it seemed a bit forced in a sense. Um, lots of beautiful color and stuff going on here. Just not sure how this this whole left side of the image really uh, is needed. It seems like forced rule of thirds. Like, you know, you have you have to intersect the frame into, and I think rule of thirds is something interesting but i i also think it's bs in some regard but um so yeah it's, it's very rule of thirds you know the, the 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 subject is here but 
I, I just think that there's just not enough interest on the left side of the frame with these sort of like blown out bricks um, out of focus that really, you know, I, I, this, this shot's better for me as a, as a vertical or like, well, if, yeah. Look at the Go next ahead. one. Look, look at the next one because the next one is well, a better version of that same. The next, uh, yeah, I, I, the next one works because <clears throat> the, the left side of the frame, right, has dimension, right? It's actually in focus and it's, it's, it's further out than the subject. So these walls point us into the subject. So like this rule of thirds makes sense. This one, not so much. Um, we're, not, we're not adding dimension with this left side of the frame. In a sense, it almost feels like we're losing it. I don't know. And this well, one, it feels like, right? Go ahead. And, and I would say the previous, this photo here would be so much more powerful, cropped way in on, on just her face and the and the outfit she's wearing. Which the, one? The, this one, right? This one. This one. Like, just think exactly. about exactly. <clears throat> that would just be. It's so much better up close. Yeah, this one is like for me. This is like uh, the crop is, you know, more more along the lines of like something like that. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So there, no, there's where it gives me the option. Yeah. So like that, to me, you know, without that white line at the top where I messed up. <laughs> this this is now something that I feel like I could see in a, mag a magazine or something. Like, and I'd go, I I would probably go even tighter. Yeah, you can go even tighter. Like, but now we look at this image; it just I, it just doesn't lend anything to it. It's just a distraction for me. This shot, I like the I like the whole piece. You know, I like I like I like everything. You know, I mean, yeah. you could if if you want to, but I don't I don't think you need to. But like, you know. No, no. See, that's that's not working for me as much. I I enjoy the, I enjoy the the, the width and the depth of the shot. It's a beautiful, beautiful shot. Great color. Let's uh, let's open it up. This shot is beautiful too. Like really, yeah. really beautiful close up. Um, just when you look at it as an overall collection, um. It's a, it's a little it's a little stand out because it's the only one that's not an environmental portrait. What's you know? weird though is I kind of I like that one maybe the most. Yeah, it's it's definitely yeah it's definitely up there. I love the texture in her hair. I love the colors. I would I would uh, almost like to see it just a little bit more to the right side, so there's a little more detail back, a little more color stuff. But but I I really like it. I think it's a really interesting portrait. It's really well done and so much detail. I mean, look, down to every single pore in the nose, you can see, right? Look at this. Yep. Every yeah. little blackhead and pore, <laughs> you can see it. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's great. A, it's great. Yeah, I think it's a beautiful collection. There's five available. 0 0.25 is certainly fair. <clears throat> um, it's, uh, um, yeah, yeah, I don't have yeah, and so and he's doing a. a uh, if you go look, he's doing a, a good job at working on promoting this the collection. He's sharing the individual images, and the titles are great. You know, in, in yielding spirit, the chosen. It sound these sound like movie titles. I'm drawn. I'm drawn to these titles. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so nice depiction of the people from this specific part of India, which I haven't yeah. seen before. So really beautiful. I think we can move on to the next collection. Yeah, yeah, I think it's good. Uh, before we move on, I, I'll say this one thing. I, I think that, um, you know, just looking at the artist's Twitter account, um, he has a pretty decent, you know, 2,500 uh, followers. He's talking about his collection. I think he's been talking about it for a while. Um, I like, and I think you should keep doing this. I would tell the story about the individual photos. <clears throat> I would too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But well, is he doing it here? What's this one? New series of portraits. This is a collection of yeah. So instead of that, like um, a story talk about, about talk about the lady, talk about the yep. woman, and then and then give us the information is like like how many you know how many images in addition and where where it can be purchased. Like make it make it about make it about the before anything else. Like. Yeah. Before before you make it about the business, right. I learned that from Sonny. 
because Sonny will keep me in check sometimes. I'll say, you know, you, it's um, your posts sound a little too business lately. Like, you know, focus on the art, talk about it. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so I'm not, I'm not coming up with all this on my own. I, have, uh, I like it. I like it. You know, I, I gotta, um, you know, take a little bit from everybody. Everybody's got okay. some. So, we have, uh, I'm not in the specific collection. Let me, let me get into this collection. Oh, Dark Bridge. Here we go. Uh, this yeah, is this Dark is... Bridge by Alphen. Uh, Alphen Y. I, I like these a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. Like, um, I love high contrast, uh, shadowy, um, shadowy stuff. All right, so <clears> description. <throat> Uh, bridges connect different sides. We all, uh, we will all pass some when I think I think mean, maybe maybe somewhere, somewhere. Uh, photos taken at a lot of bridges. To both sides. So check these out. Let's make it. Let's make them big. Wonderful. Just I just uh, I'm a sucker for the. Uh, Balloon photos with the uh, child and the, the adult. <clears throat> just, you know, just shot one yesterday on the ferry, and I was super happy. I finally got a balloon shot. It's like my first one. Um, but yeah, I love this one. Love the red, the geometry, shadow in the back. You like this one, Dan? I do. Yeah, <clears throat> it's great because it, it's it is very like it has this abstraction sort of vibe to it. it does. I love when street photographers can can take abstract food. I call a lot of these photographers from <coughs> London abstract street photographers. Like six six yeah. street under, he's a good example. It's a lot of stuff that makes you like, what the hell is this? How did he do this reflection thing? What what? Okay, this is so this... <laughs> go ahead. This is uh, I was just gonna say like the. the... There's so I love these angular lines and and I love that there's these people and they I don't know this um, you know what this almost feels like it feels like simulation a different... <laughs> it feels like a simulation or something yeah it feels well this almost feels like something that is not natural it looks like a video game like um yeah. like like Grand Theft Auto when you try to screen cap like the characters the way they walk yeah, yeah. they don't walk like normal people right, um, right. look at the shine on this watch. He's got the star shine coming off this watch. It matches the earring. Yeah. She just. Oh, it's, it, it's a cool shot. Yeah. This guy looks <clears throat> like he's walking into a wall. He doesn't even look. He looks like he's just moving without a brain. It's. Well, it, it, here's, it, here's what's really interesting, though, is that go back to the grid of the whole collection. Because they all have these weird. They're yeah. almost like these weird abstractions. The, um, the they are. Last, world feels like that too yeah it's wild like i don't it's it's like who walks this who walks like that <laughs> exactly like, I, you know what it reminds I, me of it reminds me of ben zank yeah it does remind me of ben zank's like um um urban abnormalities like yes, but he yes. set he sets himself up to look weird this and is like, like doing weird street stuff people doing weird stuff yeah i can only imagine myself walking like this man if like I I was sleepwalking, <laughs> like I woke up out of a dream and I was sleepwalking, or you know, you know, maybe my cat just died or something. Right. I don't he, know. He looks, he looks like he's over <laughs> there this morning, and he and it's just, and then it's this weird shape of light, and then this lady has her hand over her face, and then there's two weird shadows behind her. Two like over light. here, like looks like two children or something. Right. I, I this is it's weird, but I really like it, and I, I, I think love, that uh, I love it <laughs> for the same reason that I. This is one of those ones where every one of these photos I have to kind of look at and go, "What am I even looking at here?" I don't. How are they what? arranged? What are they doing? Um, the couple, the not couple, but on the border, the woman in the foreground, and then the guy in the back. What is the guy in the back even doing? I know. <clears throat> well, that's the, the thing it, that I say. I say. Yeah, I say most of the time about like street, the street photography that makes me ask more questions about what the hell is going on is more successful to me than, than, you know, you know, the phase on Instagram where like 
everybody was posting a photo like it was like holding the hand of a beautiful woman and she's like oh, running yeah. them into a landscape and it's like all right yeah. you know like you know like i get it girls beautiful landscape looks good like that's it yeah. like it's just that and it's like you just gave me all the answers and like i'm just clicking through like a mindless person on instagram now but when i look right. at stuff like this i'm like wait like i'm like my imagination is set to go in overdrive and like right. That's art to me. Like that is art in a way that like you're making like the mechanics of my brain turn and try to figure things out and I can't even figure things out. And every time I come back to the photo, I I, I find more within my imagination. Like that's success yeah. within street photography to me. And yeah. this was the stuff on Instagram that you were seeing not get a lot of likes where you were seeing that cliche stuff um, just get massive amounts of, uh, of attention. And, so I will say this, though. Wind is coming is not as strong as the other ones to me. No, it's not. And that's why I didn't open it. Uh, that's why I didn't open it up between because I wanted to talk about what was really good first. And, um, you know, wind is coming that, you know, there's – you know, you have this steeple here, but the frame is just too filled up by black where like, you know, I wish I could see some more of what's out here so that my imagination could kind of, so it could fill the gap to give my imagination a little bit more, right? Because like in this, I just feel like I have this woman and there's some wind coming through, but, you know, yeah, of course you might say, well, all this black space gives room for you to make up what's happening. Well, I don't need, I shouldn't have to make up what's happening. <laughs> it's the yeah. artist should, should, should give me something to work with, right? Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't know that there's enough for me to work with, with this image. And so this is the weakest in the set for me. Um, but other than that, I mean, this, this stuff's really cool. I mean, I think it would take me ages out in the hot sun to, um, to make some of these. So, you know. Clearly, this artist is highly talented. 0.17, I think, is really fair for a beautiful such as these. I'd probably be a little more descriptive than this. Yeah. It also looks weird that you just kind of get right into, like, Istanbul, Turkey, little photos by, like, maybe a space between this and an actual artist statement, you know. But other than that, I, I love this work. Yeah, I do, I do too. And I, I um, yeah, I think it's great. Sure. Do more. Of it. Do more of this. <laughs> yeah. Um, next. Next was the last one, and I actually picked this <clears throat> because when I picked this, it was only this shot. <laughs> so I wanted to talk constructively about how I don't know how it's a human faces collection if there's only one portrait. I think that the artist saw that they were in the um, AMA, and then they added these because if okay. you look. If you look, um, you know, minted four hours ago. But when I picked these last oh, yeah. night, you know, none of these were minted. There was <clears> only <throat> one image. And so I thought that I was doing an AMA on an edition. Um, but that now I realize we have a collection. So uh, I didn't really um, go into depth into looking at these, but let's, let's, all right. So artist statement in this collection, I will present human faces, environmental portraits from different places all right i definitely definitely want um something written from the heart and soul here about what it means to you to find street characters and why you love to find faces and how you connect with these people you got to have something here mm -hmm. that's more intriguing than this human faces version four not the best title version four so that means there's three other versions out there i think we should probably start with like mm -hmm. the, the, those versions so like let's see what's going on here um okay uh created so created we have a bunch of different works here so where's human version one two and three there's right. four starts at four <clears throat> or is this supposed to be human faces version four version four 
Yeah, there's a lot yeah. of confusion here. As a collector, I would be like, I would be thinking to myself, where, where are the other, where are the other three versions? And you wrote nothing in your description, so I don't really know, right? Um, well, where they is, are. This is one of those things where I, I feel like it's it's really good as somebody who, if you're gonna be, you want so calling yourself an artist is a thing that some people have hangups with. So I, I'll just say, if you're gonna do art, if you're gonna present your art and put it out there for people to see it. And, and admire it and potentially buy it, it really makes a lot of sense for you to curate what is available and how people can see it. And what I see when I go to this profile is a couple things that are a little odd. First of all, um, there are there's a bunch of different work here. The descriptions aren't, they don't really tell me what I'm looking at here, like the, the human faces. I want to know way more about that. Also, the V4, yeah, I mean, there are other, are there other versions. You got to fix that. Um, but also, <clears throat> just in general, um, you got to have a, a better presentation of what you're doing, of why you're doing what you're doing, so that when people come here, they go, oh, yeah, that's the guy who does this. Yeah. That's the woman who does this. And, um, a, big, and not, a big artist owns the shop, too. Like this shot, have you seen this? Yeah. Yeah, Sleeping Planes picked that. So he's a, he's a, he's like one of the best street photographers in the space, I'd say. It's just a really yeah. cool, like, there's some really cool street stuff in here. <clears throat> yeah. Like, look at these. Yeah. What so I think, collection? Well, I think, and I think what we're seeing, though, and this is, this has been kind of a common theme, is that we're seeing people who have a ton of different work that is a, it is one thing to, well, I mean, here's a good example. Um, my friend TJ Thorne is a Portland-based photographer. TJ created a really cool series last year um, that is all water drops and water textures. And then this spring, this summer, he created a series of kind of abstract architectural pieces while he was in New York. He, if you go to his profile and you look around, you'll see that they are very different, and yet he presents it in a way that makes sense. And people can wrap their heads around and go, oh, okay, cool, TJ also makes this. The problem is when you just have a bunch of random stuff, and I'm not saying this artist just has a bunch of random stuff, but when you're not super clear about what you're doing and about what, what the style is, and, and if you're not telling a compelling story, people have a hard time identifying with it. And I, that's kind of a theme I've kind of seen in the stuff we've covered today is there are a lot of artists where they have lots of random work that's not well explained. It's not, they haven't told a, a compelling story about who they are as an artist. And that's going to make it tricky for collectors to decide to buy your work and decide to support you. Absolutely. I completely agree with you, Dan. So getting to the actual collection that you know, he listed. For, uh, for the AMA. Um, human faces version four. Um, so the first shot is a uh, wood, wood coal worker. Um, and he has a description here of the, the charcoal worker who works all day in a smoky environment, doesn't give up on his cig cigarettes during a break. It's funny. Um, okay, so, and then you just go on and say camera Nikon D300S size uh, creation date. Um, and, and, you know, there's no information about whether or not it's a one-on-one, -on -one. Um, you know, like, uh, if, so you have your resolution and stuff like that, like no licensing. So I don't, I don't know if you've been in previous AMAs and stuff, I've seen this stuff a lot. Um, you know, you could also put that stuff in the properties, but the important stuff here is like name of artist, one of one, licensing. So you're missing that stuff. Uh, I do mm -hmm. like this. I, I like this little description, though. This is fine for me. Like the charcoal worker who works all day in a smoky environment doesn't give up his cigarettes during a break. That's enough for me to be like yep. cre create the rest with my own imagination. I like that. It's um, a good. It's a good portrait. It really is good. I guess the, the photo, uh -huh. right? Yeah, the photo's good. I like the photo photograph too. Like it's great depth of field. You got these two other guys in the background. Look like they're still working. He's on his break. He, his, you know, his his reaction to you is is really good. I like that a lot. Your description in the photo is larger than your 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 description of the whole 
um, series, though. Um, and so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <clears throat> so look at look at the look at the other ones. Uh... Okay. Okay. Um, this is a riff of uh, uh, Thessaloniki. Thessaloniki. Oh, cool. I got it. Oh, I got it. All right. I was photographing uh, Arif of Thessaloniki when he told me his troubles. But and then it just says troubles camera. So yeah, you know, you need a little bit of help here with the writing and stuff, right? Obviously, there's language barrier, you know, troubles, you know, period. So you're done with that part, right? Then you know, maybe want to make a couple of spaces, camera, Sony, right? Then another space, <clears throat> size, and then another space, license. You have it all mashed up here in, in one in one thing. So it's it's hard to read. It's so um, right. just making that look clean, you know, could be enough for a collector to be like, oh, I want to buy this one. But like yeah. this information is going to stay with the collector like yeah. that. Like and they're not going to want it to look sloppy like that for the rest of eternity on the blockchain. So you got to, these are some things that you should definitely get up in there and fix, right? Exactly. As far as the image goes, like I, you have this funny relationship with these characters in the street. Like they're, they it, it, it's like they're it's almost comical right like how they re respond to you like you so um so easy to get along with or you must approach them in a funny way but it, it's a good shot this one threw me off you know because you're adding color um into your, into a yeah it's 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 there though right because you can see the skin color it's so desaturated to the point where, you know, why isn't it black and white? You know, why why did you add this one with slight color? Is this like the limited edition in the collection that someone should be excited to get because it has some color? Like, it, there has to be some meaning as to why um, you go about that, right? So, like, what does it say? Uncle Kamal is making basket. I'm going to prepare a collection of this dying profession. So, you know... Talk a little bit more about like what's going on here. We're talking about this collection. You're telling us that you're going to prepare a collection of a, uh, this dying profession. Where's well, the information? No <laughs> what's that? There's no picture. There's no picture of a basket. So why are we talking about it? You yeah, know, that's we... yeah, that's true. So yeah, that's true. So um, you know, if it's about the basket and the basket making, it needs to be a bit more environmental, right? We need to have. Um, the basket in the photo and some of the environment, but yeah, so it's, that's a little confusing. There's no basket. Um, it's a it's an up close portrait. You've added color to it. The other ones don't have color. Um, cohesion is something that you really, really need to work on as an artist, making everything feel um, feel and look look similar. But not only that, tell a story together. Um, you know, once again, all this smashed up together. You got to work on that. You got some things to work on. Um, in here, so yeah, I think I think that's I think that's kind of the overall theme here is that there are some interesting photos here. These inter some interesting portraits, but yeah. if you you need to have uh, all your descriptions kind of matched. You need to really go into some detail and think about what you're doing so that the collect. You know, this we talked about collections earlier that just having. You know, you need to have a thing that binds them together, and then your presentation needs to be consistent. Yeah, absolutely. So I don't. We don't need to touch on every single photo. I think we definitely provided enough information for uh, for this artist to, to get to working on some things. Um, I would clean up your entire portfolio. You know, if you know less is more. Um, you know, you had a lot of stuff going on when we when we look into your main. You know, main collection. Um, I think that your strongest work lies here. Um, not what is it? What is the reign of sparks? Because so this is just three images of sparks, but then you have a collection that has a spark image in it. You know, you're you're all over the place. Um, I, I'm I'm just gonna say it. You know, uh, there's another this color collection. This is your best work, in my opinion. This this work, what you got going on right here. Uh, yeah. Your ability to see light and shadow. Um, these moments are amazing. Uh, that's just, I mean, this shot is great. This is a spark shot. It's sold. So you decided to then go and make a spark. So look at this, it's wild. Yeah, um, 
<laughs> right? Like, it's just crazy. Uh, so, yeah, b- really beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, I would, I, I would, you know, this, this collection is really nice. Very fairly priced, 0.08 for one of one. It's got three owners here. And then it's just like, you, you just like um, neglected this collection because it stopped selling at a certain amount. This is three months ago. And you're just like, oh, I'm going to mint a bunch of other stuff. And because you have a bunch of other stuff out there, it doesn't, doesn't increase your chances of making more capital. Um, or, 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 or having your work in the hands of more people. Actually having a more cohesive collection and only having one collection and um, telling the story about that collection and making it about art uh, through your Twitter and within the space would be the best way to, to uh, grab a collector base and, and the, and, and the, um, and, and the um, attention of collectors. So I, I would I would delete collections. I would minimize this stuff down as much as I possibly could, and 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 get your get your focus, um, you know, more on you know. So what's this here? Welcome to the home of experiences, OpenSea. So this is this is not a real description. This is like <clears throat> you created this on like a third party thing, and it just put it here. Just added this description. Um, no pricing. When was this created? 24 days ago. So this is from foundational. Yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, you know, just clean up some of the stuff, uh, focus on the story. And yeah. I wouldn't mint, I wouldn't mint anymore right now, you know? Right. And yeah. Yeah. I think that's one of the things we're kind of running into is that <clears throat> more the platforms are changing. People are jumping around, they're trying different stuff. And I think that it's good for you to just think about what is already out there. Think about how it's organized, think about how you're presenting your overall story as an artist. Yep, 100%. With that, you know, I, I think that's that we've given a good amount of uh, information for this artist to work with here. And um, this AMA was really, really good. This is a really great AMA because we touched on you know, so many other topics outside of just, you know, just talking about work and like descriptions and stuff like that. Like, like right, we touched on like Tezos and um, I know with, uh, with Yulia's uh, collection about talking uh, to collectors and how to present yourself when talking to collectors. And um, yeah, I think the overall theme here is, you know, like um, a lot of it's like uh, cohesiveness as, as always, and, you know, less is more and, you know, we don't need to mint everything and slow down. And uh, yeah, I think it was really, really great. And you have you have any closing thoughts on, on today, Dan? I really enjoyed this one. Yeah, I don't think so. I think we've kind of we've kind of gone over our kind of what our thematic suggestions were. I think the biggest thing for me that I'm I'm learning this as an artist as well is just it is it is a it's about the overall story of what you're doing and you want people to see what you're doing and go, cool, I want to support that artist. And if you, if it's just a random smattering of, of pictures, that's not, a, that may not be a very compelling story. And, yeah. and the reality is people buy art and they collect art because they, sometimes it's just because they think the picture is cool. But I think most of the time they do it because they go, because they connect somehow with um, the artist. They want to support the artist. Well, they say, oh, you know, that's a Ben Zank. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, like a, a huge goal as an artist to, is to be able to have work out there and for people to be able to identify and say, oh, wow, I know that that's Ben Zank because that, that is really weird and really along the lines of his color palette, his compositions, his outside the box type work. And, yeah, that's a huge goal for many artists. If you can get to a goal where people could see your work and identify and, and say, that's a, you know, whoever you are as an artist. Um, I think that's, that's where, where we want to lean towards to be right. is, is having that signature to our work and minting tons of stuff to the blockchain, whether it's on Ethereum side or whether it's on ETH and Tezos and Solana and, you got your macro stuff on Solana and that's okay because it's a different platform and you put your landscape stuff on Tezos and that's okay because it's a different platform and you put your, your portrait stuff on ETH 
but you want to be known as a portrait artist, you have your stuff all over the place, might not be the best idea. Um, might be the best idea to think about what your legacy is as an artist, what you want to be known for as an artist, and and mint your work with uh, clear intent and um, and and calmly and slowly and uh, and doing it right the first time. That's right. the biggest takeaway, right? Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks to all the artists who uh, who showed up and showed out today. Uh, we like seeing artists uh, here while we uh, while we're doing the AMA. It's cool to have you here. So, so excellent. Uh, thank you smart. guys. Yeah, it was a fun one. Thank you guys. You guys did a great yeah. job. Thank you very much. All right, guys, we'll collect the PO app in the what feedback AMA chat. And if you don't have the app, it's poapp.xyz, and you just click it a link, and you get your PO app. And I'm out in three, two, one. Peace. Bye, everyone. Take care, everybody.